Hi, my name is Buck Woody. And I'm Theo. We're going to be talking about uh, Azure ML. It's a really exciting space, and uh, this is one of our new jump starts. So we're really pleased to have you here. We have a good amount of information to cover. It's a very conversational style. Uh, we'll be going back and forth. We'll see some actual demos of the product that you can follow along with if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, All right. let's get started. We've got three presenters today, myself, Buck Woody, and I'll introduce myself a little further in a moment. We've got C. Young, and we also have Scott Klein who will be joining us uh, for the third and the fourth modules. There's four modules today, and we'll cover exactly what's going to be on each one of those today. So jumping down to the slides here, we've got uh, myself, Buck Woody. You can see some of the things I say about myself here. Uh, I've been in technology a very long time, and uh, I've really enjoyed uh, working in the data space. And uh, this is part of that. And I've learned machine learning over time and done lots of different things for that. Uh, these are the things I say about myself. But what I would say for today is I really enjoy trying to make complicated things a little more simple. I'm a simple guy myself, so I try to make it as simple as I can for everybody I deal with. So we're going to be bringing that down uh, sort of to earth today. So uh, this is me, uh, and we'll jump over to Si Young. Hey, so I'm Si Young Ri. I'm a senior technical product manager on the advanced analytics team at Microsoft. I've been doing this role for about eight years, and so um, it's really excited to be here to t introduce to all of you about the newly newly released Azure Machine Learning. Awesome stuff. Okay, well, uh, without further ado, I, th I think we should uh, let's get started. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so uh, uh, we want to do that. But we're not going to take it in a rush style. So you can see here on the deck uh, the things we're going to do today. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk about an introduction to machine learning. And we're going to do that in a kind of a conversational mm -hmm. style and, right. and uh, understand that when we make complicated things simple, sometimes some fidelity might be lost. So if you're a purist and you're a data scientist, uh, you may cringe a bit at some of the analogies <laughs> that we'll use, and that's okay. Uh, what we want to do is get across the concepts today. And then in the second part of Module 1, uh, what we're going to be covering is Azure ML, which is the new product. It's in preview right now. You can go play around with it. We'll show you how to set all that up today. We'll wander through the tool itself. We'll talk a little bit about Windows or Microsoft Azure as well and the things that you can do in there and then we'll focus in on the Azure ML product and we'll fool around a little bit with the IDE the integrated development environment and so on and then we'll break and we'll move on to module two and uh, in module two what we'll be covering is designing a recommender system uh, in Azure ML you've probably gone out to the sites where it said uh, hey you watch these movies and you might like these movies and if you've ever wondered how that's done well we'll build one today we'll actually start from scratch mm -hmm. and we'll actually build one of those and then I'll leave Si Young will stick around and uh, we'll move on with Scott who's going to uh, show you how to monetize this uh, because it's all about the, the money after we're done right so we've built this solution and now we need to be able to use it and expose it internally to our users in your organization and externally to people who might want to use it and you can uh, make some cash off this you can even use it on a mobile phone if you wanted uh, and then finally we'll talk about the uh, api that you can use to hit the service uh, after you've monetized it you need some way to program against it and so uh, see young i believe you'll be doing demos and things there as well so uh, lots of demos today and lots of things we're going to jump into so these are the four modules uh, anywhere from about 45 to 50 minutes each some a little longer some a little shorter and we'll just take that as it goes and we'll have some nice breaks. Uh, this is being recorded and there is a chat window that you'll see that you're able to ask some questions and so on. Uh, we have some folks online to do that uh, and you've got the information there. So I say we go ahead and get started with our first module. What do you think? It's a good idea. Right. Buck. So after all this, so after I've learned this course, would you make me a data scientist? Absolutely. <laughs> right. uh, are you kidding me? Yeah, in right. one hour, right, you're going to be able to walk into any university or any company, any scientific research company on the planet and say, I'm a data scientist. No, uh, it's probably going to take a little <laughs> bit more background than that. Got it. Uh, I'd love for that to be true. Sure. Um, we'll talk a little about the data scientist. Let's, let's, uh, let's okay. go there. So let's set some expectations here. Uh, first of all, who are you that's listening uh, to this session right now? Uh, there's three sort of groups of people that are the target audience that would use Azure ML. Now, that doesn't mean if you're not in this group uh, that's listed here that you uh, go ahead and sign off. No, stick around. We're going to make it very, very plain and straightforward what you're dealing with for sure. 
Um, but the target audience, the people that might use this the most often, are the data professionals. Uh, these are people who work with data for a living. Now, that might include a data scientist um, and other folks that work in that area. Or perhaps you're a developer mm -hmm. uh, and you write code for a living and you would like to expose this kind of stuff uh, through your applications and, and that would be a good place to have. And then finally, you've got the business intelligence professionals. Mm -hmm. Folks who have worked in BI uh, for a long time are now looking to expand their knowledge. Uh, they're actually probably one of the primary audiences here because they're familiar with something called data mining. And in data mining, you'll see that's kind of extrapolated out into some of the Azure ML tools mm -hmm. that you'll have. In fact, you'll be very comfortable in the environment, I predict, uh, our first prediction of the morning mm -hmm. uh, using this predictive language. So that's the, uh, that's the audience we, we think about. Now there's, there's also, uh, you can see, uh, some prerequisites and some supporting material that you might want to be familiar with when you jump in. We were kidding around a moment ago talking with C. Young about making him a data scientist, or myself for that matter. Uh, that takes a really long time, and you'll need really a background in, in these items. I've been told a data scientist is someone who is a developer who knows too much about statistics, or a statistician who knows too much about programming, and I think that that may be a good <laughs> that may be a good analogy. But you'll want a programming background to be sure. You'll also need to be versed in uh, statistics, and in particular, probability, the the branch of statistics that deals with probability. You'll also uh, need a background in calculus and some linear algebra. Uh, a lot of math in here, and you can't be scared of that if you're going to do it. Today, you won't need those things. We're going to have to take some black box uh, kind of ideas. I'm going to say this just happens because, and you'll have to believe that uh, because of the time period we have. We're not going to make you a data scientist today. Okay. So with these expectations set, um, I think what we should start out with is our next main module. So this is the start of the process here. And the way the reason we kind of arranged it in this way is I think you need an introduction uh, to machine learning to understand where Azure ML fits. Now that being said, uh, machine learning uh, has a, a fairly um, a big footprint, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we'll break this down into some modules. We'll talk about a machine learning overview. We'll talk about why Azure ML? Why would you use Azure ML? And then we'll talk about Microsoft Azure because that's what it runs on. We'll do a very quick two minute uh, overview on that. We'll talk about how you can get an account in less than three minutes. You can get an account, a free one, and use Azure ML today. You can literally start uh, right after this session. You can start using this. We'll need to set up a storage account once we get inside um, Azure. And I'll explain that inside Microsoft Azure. I'll explain what the storage account is for. And then what we'll do is we'll go into a workspace. We'll need to create a workspace uh, to, to allow us to create experiments. Mm -hmm. And the neat thing about workspaces is then we can share that among our peers and we can be working on the same experiment. In fact, I was doing that just yesterday afternoon, created a workspace, allowed someone else in, and they were able to work on the same experiments with me. And that's just a, a really powerful part of Azure ML. And then finally, we need to take a look at the, uh, uh, the studio itself, the IDE, the environment, the thing we're going to code in. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be very comfortable in that, and I think it's one of the strengths of Azure ML, so we'll be doing that. So without further ado, let's start out with the fairly complicated uh, machine learning overview. Um, Siyoung, what do you know about machine learning? What have you heard? Yeah, so I've heard a lot of good things about machine learning. In general, you know, people ask me, why do we actually need machine learning? And I hear, I'm hearing these from you know, BI professionals, database experts, um, and even industry you know, professionals. And so it'd be kind of great to learn why, you know, what, you know, at first, you know, why did it happen? You know, yeah. um, who can actually use it? And what are the kind of the business goals that we want to get to right. uh, through this machine learning tool? Yeah, great stuff. And in fact, um, I think you brought a slide in that talks a little bit about some of the things that you've heard mm -hmm. people say that you can use with machine learning, or some people call this predictive analytics. Right. So talk to this a little bit for me. Yeah, so some of the things that we've heard from the industry and some of the goals that we've tried to you know, get to through machine learning, as you can see in the, in the slide, is that you know, we've seen you know, telecommunication customers talking about churn analysis and how do we predict which customers will stay with us, which, why customers are leaving us. You know? We've seen people trying to do sentiment anal analysis using social networks like Facebook or, you know, or Instagram or LinkedIn. You know, we've seen people you know, using you know, online retail stores who are using recommendation mm -hmm. engines. I think mm -hmm. we're going to build 
one later. Yeah, I think module. so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and and so on and so forth. So we've seen many industries from throughout the world using these advanced tools to predict and to predict the future and things that we have we weren't have we weren't able to do in the past with things like BI. And so you know, kind of the thing, kind of the 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 key point to machine learning, I think, is that you know, with BI and data warehouses and all the the good stuff that we had before. Looks at historical data. It looks at how we ah, okay. kind of analyze stuff that happened in the past. The holy grail to, grail to all of this stuff was how do we predict the future with that data from the past? Good and I point. think my understanding is machine learning will help us kind of get there. And yeah, so, I think that's right. Yeah, it'd be great to kind of learn how to do that today. Um, yeah. Hopefully, with my expert in the book, and you can just <laughs> guide me through yeah. the process. Yeah, it sounds yeah. good. So um, it's a good point that he brought out earlier on the on the slide you saw earlier. It talked a little bit about not only the churn analysis and predictive type things but there's also the classification type thing. So in, in reality, machine learning is really around those two big pieces. Mm -hmm. The first piece is, can I predict what will happen in the future based on some information that the computer not only analyzes historically, but applies some algorithms to. Mm -hmm. So that's one part of machine learning. The other is, how can we classify things? I want to wander through a whole lot of data, and I want the computer to figure out, the algorithms to figure out, where these things are grouped together. Uh, how many women over 40 in the United Kingdom buy my product after three o'clock on a Tuesday. Uh, now this might sound very familiar to a BI professional. Uh, they might say something, oh, we, we, we do that now. Uh, but this is a, a step above, I believe, and some other things that uh, we can do. So uh, let's go ahead and get a machine learning overview. So let's get a good definition going here, Siyoung. Um, I've done a lot of reading and years ago when machine learning came out, I studied that and I thought I had a good vocabulary. I thought I understood the concepts, mm -hmm. and I put that aside and moved on. And then a few years later, it became hot again, and uh, I read a different definition, and it had a different set of um, sort of terms and things that it was using, a different vocabulary, and other concepts. Mm -hmm. And then I read, uh, as it's becoming hot again now, it's becoming the new technology that people want to know about, I noticed that yet again, the terms have changed, mm -hmm. and the concepts are renamed, and I got a little confused until I realized that it really comes from multiple disciplines. Um, there's, a, there's a question around what the difference is between just what we have in data mining and machine learning. And we're going to come to that when we start talking about the, the qualification uh, and, and putting things into categories in a bit. But the idea was that um, this is coming from lots of different places. One is it's coming from neuroscience. And neuroscience has its own, right? It studies how we learn as people. If you're going to teach a computer to learn, you have to know how a person learns. So we have that uh, concept going. And then it's got its own vocabulary and concepts, and it uses these terms. And then, of course, we have statistics, which has been doing these things for decades and, and further, right? These kind of predictive and analytic and descriptive models. And they've got their own uh, language that they use. And then now computer science has come in, uh, artificial intelligence and data mining and other disciplines in there, and they have their own vocabularies. So when I was learning it through the different paths, I was actually picking up those different terms. And that's why it may be confusing. When you get into machine learning, you may find uh, that it is less about um, being so big. And the difference is that it is around um, the different vocabularies and concepts that are used, and that's completely okay. So let's go way back. Let's jump back in the Wayback Machine. And Si Young, why don't you read this statement that you see here on the deck for me? Read that very slowly and carefully, and I think we've got our definition. Go ahead. Right. So the formal definition is a computer program is set to learn from experience E with respect to some class of tasks T and performance measure P if its performance at task in T as measured by P improves with experience E. I think oh. that's, it just couldn't be put any better, could it? And this is Tom Mitchell, one of the guys who actually has a, a lock on this particular thing. This is completely 100% accurate, oh. um, but it is um, completely 100% difficult to understand right. <laughs> if you're not used to reading technical language. I, I kind of like this statement a little better, so I'll read this one. The goal of machine learning is to program computers to use example data 
or past experience to solve a given problem. This is from uh, an introduction to machine learning from uh, MIT Press, which is uh, a really uh, highly recommended book. Well, so why have you highlighted the example data as red and past experience as blue? Yeah, for those of you that might not be able to see that on your screen, I've got the words example data and past experience in two colors. This is another way that people will explain machine learning that can be confusing. They'll explain it using the, the the techniques that are used within machine learning. So there's really two big ones. Remember we said that we're either gonna do prediction or categorization. By the way, those are oversimplifications. You can do more than that with machine learning, but that's what we're gonna focus on today. Within both of those, both prediction and categorization, there are a couple of different ways of, of learning something, for teaching the computer something. Mm -hmm. One is called supervised learning, and that is this past experience that I had highlighted earlier. And in supervised learning, you're trying to find the mapping between your inputs and your outputs using answers you already have. So we're gonna do this in a minute. I'm gonna make you the computer and we'll give you a supervised learning example. And again, for those of you that are purists, don't uh, freak out too much if I oversimplify. We're just trying to get a concept across. All right, and then we have unsupervised learning. And this is sort of like looking for patterns in the data. And there was a question earlier on, hey, what's the difference between data mining and, and uh, something in data science here under machine learning? You'll see the differences as we apply the algorithms in, in just a moment. So here you're trying to find patterns in the data. And in fact, statistics has a term for this. They call it density estimates. And it has to do with the statistical relevance of of groups of items and how they're related. Uh, so the more statistically relevant they are, the better. And we'll do that too. We'll make C. Young uh, also a computer and have him do some unsupervised learning at the same time. So let's jump into that. All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's take an algorithm here. So we're down on the slides here. We've got uh, some regular data. Mm -hmm. And you've probably seen this data before. Now, I'm an American, so I don't really speak a lot of English. Mm -hmm. However, this is the English alphabet, right? And we're familiar with this. A doesn't mean anything. U doesn't mean anything. T doesn't mean anything. They're just letters of the alphabet. This is some data that we have. Now, on top of that, we can apply some rules, or you could name those algorithms, it's the same thing. But we see here, if I put an A and a B and an O and a U and a T in English, this makes the word about. There's rules to that spelling. You're not supposed to spell it other ways. Uh, my Canadian friends might say about, but it's still, uh, it's still spelled this way. Um, so the spelling and how you pronounce it determines a word. That's some rules we have, and we've got the word learning here and language. But interestingly enough, so we learned this. We went to school and whatever language you speak, you learned your alphabet and you learned your spelling and pronunciation. That's the way language is usually developed. And then we put these things together. And we put them together, we get more rules. And the rules say if you do something like this, learning about language. If you structure your sentence or your words rather in certain ways, mm -hmm. they make a new object called a sentence. Mm -hmm. Now that's interesting. So we've learned some data. You made you memorize that. And why is the alphabet in that order? Is it that song? I don't know. Anyway, we've got the alphabet. We had to sing the little song and we learned that. Then we learned some rules. You remember sitting in class and doing spelling after spelling after spelling. Right. Then you learned a noun, verb, noun. You learned all the gerunds and participles and all of the different grammar rules. So we applied data. We had some rules. We applied rules to rules. And now we have learning. So C. Young, why don't you read the last uh, sentence on this slide? So any new understanding proceeds from previous knowledge. So this is what we call abstraction. And that is, that is machine learning in a button. Uh, abstraction is the machine learning. Taking some information you had before, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and taking the rules for spelling, taking the rules for a sentence, putting those things together, and every word and every book and every statement since English was a language that has ever been spoken has come from just those two concepts, some data and some rules. That's it. That's machine learning. Uh, it's actually the learning that we do as humans, and so they just extrapolated that back out. And I mean, there's, this goes all the way back uh, to Bletchley Park and can machines think? Uh, we get all these kinds of statements throughout our computing history. So this is machine learning in a bucket. Mm -hmm. So now we need to talk about those two techniques. What do you think? Sounds good, let's do okay. it. All right, so let's talk about supervised learning. Supervised learning is used when you wanna predict 
unknown answers, things you don't know, mm -hmm. from things you already do know. So you want to give a pattern and say, here are some correct things. Now I'm going to show you something you've never seen based on what you've learned. Remember, we learned the word learn. Whatever you've learned, your abstraction, is this thing one of those or will this thing go up or down and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's what supervised learning is. Now, to do this, we need two kinds of data. Statistics will teach you that you uh, need to stay away from doing something called overfitting the data. And what that means is if you uh, believe that you, uh, we interview three people in the hall and we ask them, do you like Halloween candy? Mm -hmm. And all three of them say, I love Halloween candy. And we say 100% of people surveyed love Halloween candy. It's not a statistically relevant sample, right, right. so it communicates the wrong message. And you can do that with machine learning as well. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to start with the data we want to analyze, and that may come from a lot of different places. And we're going to break that up. We're going to put some of it on the left and some of it on the right. The leftmost data is going to be the data the computer learns from or the algorithm learns from. The rightmost data is the data we hold out. It's called holdout data or test data mm -hmm. because we already know the answers to both. That's the whole point of this. Mm -hmm. So we're then going to apply the algorithm and we're going to say, use the test data and see if the answers match. Got it. One plus one equals two. One plus two equals three. Mm -hmm. One plus three equals four. Mm -hmm. The computer thinks, you know, an n plus one is the right algorithm. Well, I happen to have six plus one equals seven. Mm -hmm and seven plus one equals eight over here in my test data. So I said, let's apply this rule and see if it fits, and if it does, right. that's how we test it. So it'll be like a control group and like an experiment. It's exactly that. It's the control group and the experiment. Perfect way to put that. Right. All right, the next step then is after we select and clean the data, we need to select some things that show that this is the right answer to the question, right? Uh, these are called a whole bunch of different things. Some are called, uh, the labels are called answers, uh, the categories or columns or attributes are called features, and the values that we have are, well, they're values. Right. So uh, don't get hung up on these terms, by the way, because uh, uh, these will vary. So again, if you're a purist on the line, uh, feel free to yell at our monitor and uh, say, you've got it wrong you've got it wrong it's okay got it. all right then what we do is we're going to select an algorithm or maybe more than one algorithm and always more than one algorithm to test the data to see and then we're going to run that program because we end up with a program on the data set we compare the answers to the test set and then once we're done we pick the model which is really a program that fits the best. So that's what machine learning is. It's all driving toward getting a model, a mathematical model that says, if you do this stuff to this data, mm -hmm. you'll come back with the right answers. Now, right answers is a big, <laughs> is a big topic. Um, uh, what we mean is as right as it can be. So you'll get some confidence intervals. If you're used to statistics, you'll, you'll realize that. There's some confidence intervals there and so on. So a little different. So, Bob, um, I've heard a term called classification. Yeah. Um, would that be something that falls under your supervised learning? That's a great question. Um, let's go talk about uh, some supervised learning here okay. and see if that comes up. Uh, in fact, good. why don't we make you um, uh, a, a supervised learning machine? So Got let's it. go to the screen here. Okay. And um, I'm going to tell you that this is a car. Mm -hmm. So I want you to develop an algorithm in your head um, that, that points out a few salient features of what you're looking at. So give me a couple of attributes you notice about this image. Right, so I think a car has four wheels. Looks like it, yeah. It has a windshield. Okay. And it has a couple of doors. Okay. And maybe two headlights. Maybe some headlights. Okay, yeah. so headlights, wheels, uh, four in specific. We can't see those, but we're extrapolating. Right. A windshield and maybe some doors. Right. Okay, good. Um, is your hypothesis a little more strong? Are you confirmed in that? Right. So, I'm telling you this is a car. Right. So do you agree that it has doors? Yeah, I think it has doors. Windshield? Yes. Wheels? Yes. Lights. Okay, good. It's a car. How about this one? I tell you this is a car. Right. Apply your algorithm. What do you see? Right. So it, it looks like a car. It has four doors. It has wheels. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't have a... It's got a, a windshield there. Windshield, a little bit of windshield, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's and lights. Yeah. So you may learn, oh, you know what, it doesn't always have a roof, because right. I'm telling you this yeah. is a car. Right. So you've changed your algorithm a right. little bit. Right. may not have roof, roof or right. whatever. Right. Okay, good. How about this one? Oh, that definitely looks like a car. Yeah, that's, that's a nice car there. Right. All right. I don't know what model that is. Maybe somebody in the chat window can tell us what model that is, if it's even a real model. Okay. I got these from the Microsoft images to make sure we stayed within copyright, yes, yes. so I want to make sure. Good idea. <laughs> All right. Uh, how about this one? 
This one's a car, right? Uh, yeah, it looks like a car. Yeah. Um, it okay. has something on the top, but it definitely fits in the category. Your algorithm is, yes. is, is confirmed. Saying yes. So yes. you as the computer have developed an algorithm mm -hmm. that says if wheels equal four, if uh, windshield equals true, yep. if headlights equal two, uh, if doors equal something, it one or car. two or whatever, equals car. Right. Okay, That's good. That's your algorithm. Yes. You're going to stick with that. All right. I'm telling you this is not a car. Now, you can do one of two things. You can create an algorithm that says, what is this? Mm -hmm. Or you could create an algorithm that just says, doesn't match my other one, right? Right. Remember your classification question you just right. asked? We're kind of doing that at the moment. Got it. Even though this is supervised learning. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my point. Got you it. can do supervised learning mm -hmm. or unsupervised learning uh -huh. on either classification or prediction or both. Got it. So there, there can be a mix. Sure. All right. So this is not a car. Nope. Doesn't okay. Like doesn't, doesn't doesn't fit your algorithm. It does not. How about this one? It's got four things on the ground, uh, but still doesn't have the other. It's got two kind of, eyes. Uh, no, I don't think no. so. No, <laughs> still not a car. Okay, good. Not a car. And I've told you it's not a car. Yes. Okay. The 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 crazy running guy, not a car. Nope. Not All right. Car. Good. So now I've held out some data, mm -hmm. and I've said, you know, if C Young is right, if his algorithm is right, I know the right answer. So I'm mm -hmm. going to describe something for you. I'm going to describe something red with four tires. Mm -hmm has two headlights mm -hmm. and a windshield and some doors. Right. Do you think that's a car or don't you? It probably is a car. Okay, you're pretty sure it's a car yes. because your algorithm says that would be true. Yes. And then also, um, I'm gonna describe something else for you. A, a very delicious treat that I love all the time. It's got a flat piece of corn that's been folded up and it's been filled with delicious um, filling and it's got, it's got some sour cream on it and maybe some lettuce. Do you think that's a car or not a car? Uh, probably not. I don't think that's probably a car. Probably not a car. Yeah. So I've just tested your data, and in fact, the red thing is a car. You're right, 100%. Mm -hmm. And the taco is, in fact, not. Now everybody wants tacos. I don't know what time it is where you are, <laughs> but now I suddenly want a taco, and it's early morning for me. Okay, so this is supervised learning. You got this? Does got this it. make sense? Perfect. Sense. Okay, let's talk about the next one, which is unsupervised learning. So if supervised learning is giving you the right answers, mm -hmm. testing the other answers, mm -hmm. now you can make extrapolations, and the algorithm is, if I see a car, got it. and I see it's got, or rather an object, and mm -hmm. it's got two headlights and mm -hmm. four doors and blah, blah, we know it's a car. Okay, good. So got that's the algorithm we've published. Got it. Now let's look at some unsupervised learning. We'll make you uh, an unsupervised, and you can play along at home. You tell me what you think, and we'll give you a pause here before you answer to see if the folks uh, at home listening can play along. All right, here we go. This is when you want to find uh, unknown answers uh, among groupings, usually, uh, directly from the data. Mm -hmm. I just want to dump a bunch of stuff on the floor. I want to separate it into groups that mm -hmm. make sense. Mm -hmm. All right. um, the only problem here is there's no real simple way to measure how accurate you are. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can do the test data, the holdout. This is a little harder to do that. Mm -hmm. The density estimates inside statistics will help and show you. Now, the neat thing is this evaluates more vectors or features or attributes, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. In fact, it will go, the computer will go, and start teasing out what those attributes are. Mm -hmm. It would have looked at the cars. Mm -hmm. It would have looked at the teddy bear. It would have looked at the running man. Mm -hmm. And it would have pulled out. Even the graphics that we have here is, is not an unreal example. That, that actually happens to where the image recognition will say, you know, I'm noticing these shapes. I'm noticing these rhomboids mm -hmm. and trapezoids and all these different things. They don't match. I don't think they're statistically relevant to each other. And then we start with the data in this particular module. We apply an algorithm, a grouping algorithm, and then we take a look at the groups. So steps four, five, and six that you see here are how we do this. Mm -hmm. So I tell you what, let's go do it. Sure, let's do let's that. make you and you, you're a supervised learning machine. By the way, you did very well. You're 100% you accurate. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that's great job. Right. Um, so you are now uh, a learning machine. Awesome. Instead of machine learning. So let's go into some unsupervised learning. So I have on my screen here some words. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like you to do is I would like you to tell me some salient points, some features that you might evaluate mm -hmm. to separate these words into groups. So give me one that you think right off the top of your head. Before you do, let's let the folks at home take a guess. What's the first thing you might think about that makes these things different from each other? All right, let's see if C. Young's got the same. C. Young? Uh, I noticed color. Color. All right. Hopefully most of you got color. All right. Let's get another one. What's something else that you notice on this screen? Let's take a look at that, that you might uh, group them together by. 
I noticed the first letter is either capital or not. Okay, so did you get that? Capitalization or not capitalized? Good. Give me one more. And finally, I think there's either a number or a letter on the, the final bit. Okay, the final trailing object, object. Is, is either a, a letter or a number. Do you right. think that's a, so? So based on what you said, mm -hmm. these things are highly corollary. Like the blues also are all the ones that have uppercase. Mm. And the reds are also the ones that have... Le so probably, what do you think the, the layout might be? So I think we'll have a couple of blue lettered words okay. and a couple of red lettered words okay, good. and hopefully they'll kind of match. Okay, good. Let's try. All right, let's take a look at the screen. Hopefully as you played along at home, this is what you got. These things have a very high corollary effect. In other words, that means that example one, example two, and example three share three traits at least that are the same, much less the words example. But notice the word example shows up in the other grouping as well. Mm -hmm. However, it has a high corollary effect, meaning that they're all red, they're all lowercase, and they all follow with a, uh, a letter instead of a number. Very good. So now you're an unsupervised learning machine along with uh, being a supervised learning machine. All right, that's the end of the, uh, of the discussion of machine language for now. Uh, we've, only, we've done about 35 minutes on that. Uh, it's probably one of the fastest uh, college semesters or courses that you've ever taken uh, and, and it's probably woefully inadequate and a little uh, a little incorrect in places but I think it gets the concepts across to you I hope that's been useful quick and clear definition of just machine learning in general its history and so on by the way lots of great books lots of great resources out there uh, for machine learning and I'll show you our site where you can learn even more and we're gonna play with the product which will do that so now we need to talk uh, in our next module here. Uh, we need to spend a few moments on why Azure ML? Why did we come up with this, Siyoung? I mean, certainly this has been done before. This can't be new that Microsoft just came up with it. Right. Wonder what people used before. Yeah, so I think I've, people have used things like R or SAS or SPSS and various tools in the industry. Um, to you know, look at their data, mm -hmm. you know, do predictions, mm -hmm. and see what they get. So yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard that before. Yeah, I, I've, I, I agree. That's exactly what I've seen. Uh, the data scientists that I work with there at the University of Washington, where I teach, mm -hmm. uh, do exactly that. They've got a suite of tools, mm -hmm. Python and, mm -hmm. and Mahout inside Hadoop, mm -hmm. uh, and all these other uh, open source products, mm -hmm. and they work great. And, and they do their job, and the, the data scientist mm -hmm. uses us quite well. So let's take a look, uh, take a look here at this, sure. the deck. Uh, why Azure ML? Why would we do that? And then next we'll take a look at setting up a Microsoft Azure account. We'll set up a storage account. Then we'll load some data. Then we'll set up a workspace. And then we'll access uh, Azure ML Studio. And we'll take a little tour. And that'll actually form the, the, the bulk of what we're going to do today. But why Azure ML? Uh, why should we start out with that? Well, I think what it does, this is my thoughts, and then maybe you can sure. give us some of yours. There are three really big things, I think, that Azure ML does for us. Mm -hmm. The first is it provides a common place for us to work in a consistent way. We have workspaces, which is where you can perform experiments. You can allow various people to use those. So now I've brought my team together that, begin, that can begin to um, bring to bear their technology specialty mm -hmm and be able to work in that environment in a common way. Mm -hmm. I think that's very powerful. It happens to be graphical, although you can code against it. We're going to see that in a bit. Mm -hmm. But it's a graphical environment that is highly customizable. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we don't lose some of our old tools. Mm -hmm. R is still available mm -hmm. uh, within. It's a module you can drag right on. So you don't lose any of the work you've done, mm -hmm. but you have a better place to do it. So that's number one is this unified environment. The second thing for me is the algorithms. Mm -hmm. We're gonna see this in a bit where we've dragged some algorithms. You remember your N plus one algorithm and you remember your car equals to this and for that and five this, that kind of thing. We've got those and they are industry recognized, not just from Microsoft, but industry recognized as really world-class algorithms for things like a recommender system. And they were, they're a little black box, you drag some inputs in and the thing crunches through that and you can tell it use lots of algorithms to figure out the best one. So it just simplifies this by giving you best of breed algorithms mm -hmm. while not taking away your own. You mm -hmm. can still write your own. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly, and this is the thing Scott will be talking to us about in just a bit, it allows you to actually um, uh, publish this stuff and consume it. And I think that's super important. So. 
uh, I think we're right on time here. We sure. probably should jump in right. and talk about the next section, which is a quick Microsoft Azure overview. We'll get a storage account, uh, or get an account rather, and then we'll get a storage account. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alt tab right over into my browser. And so that you can see, because I know the number one complaint when people uh, go to a session is they can't see. If you go to azure.microsoft.com in a browser, you'll uh, show up at the Microsoft Azure site. By the way, you can also type in microsoftazure.com. And in fact, windowsazure.com, which was the previous name, still works. So we'll pop out of that Zoom. And you'll notice you're on our main site where you can find what the system can do, the pricing, the documentation, and so on. Now, what I want you to focus on is I'm going to scroll down here and you'll notice there's a little video that says get started. <laughs> and if you click on this in three minutes, it will show you how to set up an account in Azure. All you have to do is click on this button. The sample account is free. You have a certain amount of time. You have a certain amount of resources you can use. You will provide some identification. You won't be charged. Uh, for anything you use in the sample workload. You have lots of ways to buy and pay for this. If you have an MSDN, a Microsoft Developer Network account, you've already got free time on top of this free time. So uh, you just click the button here, uh, marked free trial, and you'll jump in. I'm not gonna do that for two reasons. Number one, I already have an account. Uh, that's the main reason. And then secondly, uh, the video here walks you through step-by-step -step in less than three minutes how to do that. So hopefully that's uh, a value to you. So I'm gonna jump out and I'm, we're gonna assume I have clicked on the word right here called portal. So if I click on the word portal, what I then see is the main Windows Azure portal that you can see here. Now I'm not gonna zoom in on this, um, but I just wanna talk to a few of these features. What is Microsoft Azure? What in the world is this thing? Well, it's a platform. <laughs> it's kind of a, a catch-all word, but it really is that. And it does at least what I call three big things. Mm -hmm. Now this may not be the Microsoftism, but it is a Buckwittyism of how to describe Azure. In one side, you can write software and we'll run it for you. This is called Platform as a Service or PaaS. You can see here I can do that with websites or something we call cloud services. You literally write in Visual Studio or Eclipse. We support open source, that works just fine. And you right click and say publish, you publish it to us and we run it. Programmatically, we take care of all the servers, we take care of all the patching, we take care of all the everything, even the scale if you want that. It will automatically scale out and back in, and that's pure code based. We support .NET and open source licenses. So that's thing number one, PaaS, or Platform as a Service. Thing number two is called IaaS, or Infrastructure as a Service. And in here we have three or four big pieces. The first big piece is virtual machines and we have Windows machines, and we have Linux machines, and we've even got Oracle machines. We've got lots of systems that you can deploy. You simply click the new button down at the bottom, you select your size, your region you want to deploy it in, and off you go. Another section that you have, um, or, or function you have within infrastructure as service, is storage. And here I do want to pause a moment. First thing you should do after you get your sample account is come set up what's called a storage account. Now inside a storage account, and it's very easy to do by the way, I'm going to zoom in for you here. We'll just click the zoom button and I'm just going to click new and storage and then the word quick create. And then I would get a, a URL, I identify it personally to me. And then I give it an affinity group. You just pick a location. We have locations around the world. The data centers are run by Microsoft. They're huge. Your data is safe. It's protected. It's redundant, if you like. And in fact, here's that setting, replication, geo-redundant, which means it'll be replicated three times in a data center, your data. It will be replicated again, all three copies, to a geographically separate data center, mm -hmm. but geopolitically the same. So US data doesn't leave US, and Europe data doesn't leave Europe, and so on. That's the way that works. Or you can turn that off if you just want it to retain inside a data center. So that is the quick thing you wanna do first, and you'll get a storage account. Once you do that, you'll give it a name. I've got here uh, Buck Demo Azure ML, which we're gonna use, and MS Buck Storage. Now, once we're inside storage, we can do a lot of stuff. We can make blobs, which are binary large objects. We can make tables, which are NoSQL pairs uh, type uh, storage. Lots of other things we're not gonna cover that today. Sure. 
Another piece of infrastructure you can do is you can actually set up networking uh, from your on-premises location, either software-wise or physically. Uh, and we even have a new option to where you can set up uh, on a backbone to where you're very, very fast and very, very secure. So you have three options with that. All of that is encrypted for the traffic. All right. So that's the infrastructure side, or IaaS. So we've got PaaS, we've got IaaS, and finally we've got software as a service, or SaaS. And that's where Azure ML comes into play. It's a service. You log on, you use it, and when you're done, you log off. Works through a browser, works on a Mac, works on a PC, works on Linux, works on your tablet, doesn't matter. It's just a web browser. And we support lots of web browsers. It's not IE specific, if that's not the one you use. So since you mentioned web browsers, can all of machine learning be done through the browser without installing any additional software? Yeah, that's absolutely correct, Siyoung. Um, that is one of the, remember I talked about that unified environment. Well, what if I've got people sitting in Europe and I've got people sitting in Asia and I've got people sitting in the US and they all use different operating systems and have different IT departments, but they need to solve a data science problem. They can all use Azure ML they can all wander through uh, the same exact things and, and pull down the same exact environment, even though they're on different platforms, different operating systems, different IT departments. Great question. Awesome. All right, I'm now gonna go ahead and click in here and we'll take a quick tour. Once we've set up our account, once we've set up our storage account, now we need to go set up some machine learning. So let me zoom in so you can see a little better. And here on machine learning, I'm just gonna click into that object. And when I do that, you can see I've already created a machine uh, environment, an ML environment, but I'm gonna show you how you would do that. You'd simply click the new button, you'd go to machine learning on the preview, and you'd quickly create, there we go, quickly create a workspace name. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. We've already got one. You're gonna set up the workspace owner, which is your um, ID that's associated with your subscription. That way you're the owner and can grant other people the ability to work. You pick a location, you pick how you wanna pay for it, and it's just on the subscription, your free one. And then you pick that storage account we talked about. Done. Then once you go inside your workspace, you'll see a dashboard, uh, there's a place to configure it, and there's some web services that have been published. I'm gonna leave that for the moment. You'll see more of that in other tutorials. For time's sake, we'll wanna jump over into the, um, the studio. And we do that with this button right here. Now, you can also get to the ML Studio directly, and I'll show you that URL in just a moment, but this is another way you can get to it. So assume I've clicked on that to save us some time. I've got a shake and bake going over here, and you can also see that, uh, that sort of URL, which is studio.azureml.net. If you go to that, it will prompt you for your login, and you'll be dropped here. Now, don't rush by this homepage. We often rush by the homepage. Don't do that. Uh, there's some new things that have been released. This is in preview. So we're doing uh, a live demos on a preview today. That should be a lot of fun. Um, but the point is that things are coming out at a rapid, very rapid pace. And so make sure you, you jump in here. There's some user guides, as you can see. And there's even these great quick starts, getting started, saving data, pre-processing data, predictive modeling, putting it into operation, and then there's the go get started button. All right, but let's take a look at this. If I take a look here, so I'm gonna zoom in, we can see our sample experiments page, and we're gonna go there in just a moment. We're gonna read about some sample experiments, and we can even read about sample data sets. Mm -hmm. So all very cool stuff I highly advise that you go through the samples one at a time. Some are more consumable, I might say, than others, meaning some are very complicated, some are very simplistic. We're gonna pick kind of a middle of the road one for today. We're gonna recreate one of the experiments, and I'll actually show you that in the next module. So after I'm on the studio home, I click on the button called experiments, and you'll notice I've got recent work and all my saved experiments. I'm not gonna zoom in, there's just the names of the saved experiments. There's some samples, when we click here, we can actually see all of the sample uh, stuff that Microsoft has already done. We're gonna be using one of those uh, today in our environment. Uh, and so what we can do is, uh, let's, let's tour this a little bit, and uh, then we'll come back and finish up these other two icons. Let's, um, let's create a new experiment. Let's do that. So I'm just gonna jump down uh, let me zoom in here for you here. Once again, I click new, and the first thing I could do is a data set, and the second is an experiment. Now we have some sample data already loaded into Azure ML, but you're probably not gonna use that. 
um, you're going to load your own data, hence the reason for the storage account. Right. That's where it lands. So just, One, to, be, just to be clear, yeah. even for new users, there will, always, there will be sample data sets and sample always. experience loaded there for them always. to try out. Yes, awesome. absolutely. Okay. The, da the data sets that we have and the examples are right there. Got it. Then we can create our experiment. Let's, let's just do that. Let's just create a new experiment. So I'm going to unzoom, and you'll notice even this palette that you see on the screen has a little tutorial built right in. Mm -hmm. And you can see here on the left, I've got various objects and I can explore those. And so uh, I'm gonna right click and I'm just gonna go grab one. Here's an adult census. So I'm just gonna grab that data set and I'm just gonna drop it on. Now, a data scientist, the first thing they do, by the way, there's a little center button here. If I click this little center button, it automatically jumps in and makes that a little bigger. I kinda like that feature. All right, yeah. so I've got the adult census data. The first thing I like to do is to right click on the little, on the little round circle here and we can download it as a CSV or we could visualize it. And when we visualize it, it actually runs through the process. And you'll notice it kind of shows you here the uh, titles of all the columns. I'm not going to zoom in for the moment. We'll come back to this. But then it gives you some quick uh, statistics on that. And then it actually shows you the data right here. So already I'm kind of exploring my data. And if I click on a column, it will actually create a graph for it. And I can do a box plot or I can do a trend line and so on. So I'm going to close this for the moment. And now that I've got my data, I would like to do something with it. But you can see there are a lot of things I can do. And we're going to do some of those in the next module. I could go right click or click these and, and start pulling each one down and uh, then start drilling and trying to find the one I want. Or I can just search it. And it's actually a lot faster Convenient. just to search it. So I'd like to do some basic stats on this. Uh, so I just type STA and there we go. Here's descriptive statistics, elementary statistics, linear correlation. I'm just going to grab the descriptive statistics object, put it on the screen, and let go. And I'm just going to center again. And then I'm going to grab the data output of the first object. And notice that the box turns green. Uh, and that means you can, in fact, drag this here. And I'm going to drag and let go on top of that box. Well, I'm going to do it better this time. There we go. And it finally hooked. Notice that the blue line is now around the word descriptive statistics. And if I look on the right, there are no parameters that I need to put in here. There's no properties yet. And there's actually some documentation here. So I've actually clicked that already. And you can see this tells me everything about descriptive statistics. Here's what it'll show me. Here's the technical notes. Here's what it thinks is coming in. Here's what it's going to output. Here's the errors it might generate and why. This is really helpful, so I do this all the time. So now that I've done this, uh, I'm going to run this. Right now, I can't visualize anything. You'll notice when I click on this, I can't visualize anything. And the reason I can't visualize it is I have not taken the data from here and put it in here. There's nothing in this bucket. So let's run it. This takes just a moment or two. We have just about five minutes left in our session. You'll notice the small clock on the descriptive statistics. If that runs within the time allotted, and it did, it was very quick, you can see the green checkbox. Now I can right click and pick the word visualize. Or I could save that as my data set. Perhaps that was my only experiment. Kind of a lame experiment. There you go. It works. So we'll visualize that. Look at what I get. I get the count of feature, I get the unique value, the missing, the min, max, mean, the standard deviations um, uh, over here, the sample variance, very interesting descriptive uh, statistics. And once again, if I click on any of these, so let's just grab one here. Uh, here's the mode. If I just click on the mode, you'll see I actually get a, a graph of uh, what it shows me there. And another feature that's very, very useful is the missing value count, because one of the things we'll have to do is we'll have to go in and clean up data if we want to analyze it. Okay. I think we've done a nice little tour here uh, inside the system. So I think at this point, let's do this. Um, let's uh, uh, jump around here and make sure there's nothing else in our deck that we need. We did set up an Azure ML workspace already. So if uh, you're at the point of the video where you've jumped ahead to that, uh, jump back a little, about two or three minutes, and you'll see where we did that. And we also went ahead and explored the Azure ML Studio. So if, again, if you've jumped to here through the jump codes, uh, just take a couple minutes and go back about two or three minutes, and you'll see that exploration. So Buck, you had all the fun this time. Would yeah. you be able to teach me how to do it myself in the next module? That's an idea. So in other words, you drive, and I'll, I'll just drive. tell you what to do? Let me drive. And we're going to do this live. Yes. OK, what if we screw up?
Then we screw up. Okay, we screw All right. up. All right. If if everybody on the on the phone is okay with that, or on the on the uh, live meeting is is okay with that, uh, we'll we'll do that. We'll uh, we'll have you drive the experiment. Got it. And what we'll do is uh, we'll have you explore the current experiment, mm -hmm. and then we'll not use that, mm -hmm. but we'll actually have you completely rebuild it, and we'll run it all the way to the end. From scratch. From scratch. Sounds like a good idea. So uh, if you're watching it at home or at work, uh, the next module is where we'll actually take our time uh, and go through each one of these uh, these steps and we'll explain some things. A couple things to note there when we do that in the next module, which will begin shortly, um, you will find that uh, we're going to do a few black boxes where we'll have to say, okay, this, this works this way, trust me on this, uh, because just for the time factor. Okay. But I think we can do it in 45 to 50 minutes. I can, I can teach you to set up a predictive analytics solution that you could sell. Awesome. When you're done, it will be something you can sell. It's okay. um, an interesting thing to try, right. but hey, uh, it's live, it's uh, education, and okay. if we do mess up, it's a great chance to learn if something goes wrong. Got it's it. a great chance to figure out why live and on screen in front of all our friends here. So listen, thank you very much. There is a survey at the end of all of this. Uh, we're gonna mention that in each video. You need to fill out that survey so that you know that we're doing uh, good, or we know we're doing good. Uh, and uh, I wanna thank C. Young for being here with us, and uh, definitely happy to be here myself, and I really appreciate your time. Hopefully this module's been valuable. You've got a lot to digest. These are recorded, so you'll be able to go back and watch them again. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate you being here live. Right. So we'll see you back in... 10 minutes? 10, 10 minutes? minutes? Right. Yeah, sounds good. So in 10 minutes, we'll start back up. Uh, we'll start the counter here in just in a few minutes. Thanks again. Thanks, guys. Hi there, I'm still Buck Woody. And I'm still Si Yang Yeah, and we're in the middle of the getting started with uh, Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Jumpstart. And uh, in our last module, we had a lot of fun uh, going through what machine learning is. Mm -hmm. uh, we then talked a little bit about what Microsoft Azure is. Right. And then we talked a little bit more about um, the Azure ML, right. why, why right. even have it. Right. And then we opened up the portal and we got ourselves a storage account. Right. And then we opened up the ML Studio and used that storage account mm -hmm. and started. We actually did a, a quick little cheap yeah. experiment. Mm -hmm. And then C. Young issued uh, us a challenge and he said that he wanted to run the demos from here. Uh, from now on, the screen uh, time will be his mm -hmm. and the cameras will be mostly on him. So, right. But I'm driving you. So, yes. if it, so I'm not sure who's at fault if it screws up. I, I'm going to blame you. I didn't say right. it was your fault, but I, <laughs> I will blame you. Which is fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've gotten my sixth cup of coffee, so I'm, I'm good for the next okay. break All until right. we get to that. Right. Uh, but right now, I think we're ready to go. Okay. All right, let's do it. Um, let's uh, jump to the next uh, text here. And, and, and once again, just to kind of reorient you on where we are uh, in the course topics, we've already covered module one. And by the way, that is recorded. And you'll see that in about two to three weeks. There'll mm -hmm. be an announcement here on uh, the Microsoft Virtual Academy on uh, that being available and through your other Microsoft channels. Uh, you'll see that as well, uh, those things announced. And uh, we're now in module two, uh, which is designing a recommender solution. So Si Young and I talked a little bit in the last session, and we'll describe this a bit more as we go through. And then following this session, Scott Klein will be joining C. Young uh, in this uh, chair, and he'll go through how to monetize this and get it up on the Azure Marketplace so you can make some money off of your efforts. And then finally, you'll need to code against it. And uh, I think you're, you're doing an experiment there as well, right? You're driving and all that? Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Wow, that's, that is very impressive, you're a brave man. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, so without further ado, let's introduce the topic here of designing a recommender solution with Azure ML. And once again, uh, myself, Buck Whitty, and C. Young Ree will be joining you for this module. And uh, we'll give you a quick overview. And it's really just two pieces today. <laughs> There's going to be defining the problem that mm -hmm. we want to solve. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, we have to decide what we're looking to get out of this when we're done. Right. Now, 
it's an experiment, right? So uh, in the world of science, uh, there's never a bad experiment. It either passes or fails. Right. As long as the experiment runs and is complete, it's a good experiment. And that's, that's why we use these terms uh, of experiment is because uh, we're going to do something and it may or may not sort of work. Sounds we have been given some questions on the chat windows. That's great. And for those of you watching this recorded, you don't have the opportunity to chat, uh, but you can read through those and look through those. One question that was asked earlier, which I thought was very interesting, is what's the difference between a system like uh, perhaps IBM's Watson and machine learning? And it's a great question. In, in fact, uh, they're very similar. Uh, Watson, I think, goes beyond and into the idea of artificial intelligence and a lot more of the language processing. But the tools that Watson uses are exactly these. Uh, so um, this is an exciting time to be part of computing technology. We're making a new quantum leap, I think. There are these segments of computing history where we make these huge leaps. And with things like Azure ML, we're democratizing this idea of the data science. Now, I want to be careful there because immediately what you hear is, well, you can't just put data science in a box. And that's true. At the moment, we can't do that. However, I remember uh, back in 1997 or so, mm -hmm. uh, attending a business intelligence conference and was told then, we'll never have BI in a box. Huh. There'll always be a very specific group of people. Mm -hmm. You bring them your data. They will come down with the tablets from the mountain and tell you, thus saith the data. Yes. Um, and now we really do have BI in a box. A lot of people are very conversant with some of the advanced features in the latest versions of Excel. Mm -hmm. And SharePoint has a lot of uh, the BI front ends built in. Mm -hmm. And of course, SQL Server and other products have these huge capabilities that mere mortals can actually implement. So will mere mortals actually ever implement uh, machine learning? Well, we'll find out today, because I'm certainly in that camp, and I think C. Young would, would um, agree. Right. So the first thing you have to do, though, when you're in data science, is you have to figure out what you're trying to solve. What do you want to know? And what we'd like to know in this particular case is what we talked about earlier. You've gone to a site, perhaps you bought a book, or you bought a movie, and it says down at the bottom, you know, if you like this movie, you're going to like that movie, right. right? Now, it could be that the algorithm is they just look at everybody that likes that movie and rates it high, and they say, well, it's just rated that one high, too. That's a simple algorithm, but I don't know that that's uh, right, so I don't know the data behind that, and it may not be trustworthy. So what we'd like is to put some math over that and know that this movie um, had explosions and perhaps was directed by Michael Bay. Uh, maybe that's redundant. Yes. Uh, I think if it's directed by Michael Bay, it has explosions. But at any rate, walks across these various features and says, these movies share this in common with these other movies. And it's interesting because, C. Young, you had asked earlier, is that a sort of a categorization problem or a prediction problem? It's kind of both, isn't it? I mean, it, it says these movies are similar, and because of that, I'll predict that you'll like this one. Right. It's kind of an interesting mix, and I think it's fairly consumable. We have an example of it, which is the best thing ever, and then we also have um, the, uh, the recreation of it when we're all done. All right. So let's start out with our first module here, uh, defining the problem that you want to solve. Now, it's most important here when you're thinking this through, um, this is the most important part. Now, there is data mining. We were also asked earlier, is what's the difference between data mining and, and this data science that we're doing here in Azure ML? And that's a great question. In some cases, there's a huge overlap. Hmm. Um, we throw down the data and we look at it. But you made a very interesting point. You said that uh, one thing, the data mining is more historical. And these new tools give us the ability to be uh, predictive and historical. I think, I think that might be the main answer and difference to that question. Um, and here what we're trying to find out is, what do you want to know? Now, sometimes you don't know what you want to know. But in this case, usually you do. Something happens that says, um, I'm a manager and I would like to know where I should put people. An interesting idea, Here, here's a thought that I, that I saw the other day. A gentleman was telling me about the facilities um, uh, that he had at a particular large organization here in the Pacific Northwest. And they had cameras everywhere. And so uh, they actually did machine learning across the images they got 
to know where to put their security personnel at different times of the day. They only had a certain number of security personnel. They wanted to protect the cars. They wanted to protect. So they actually did some machine learning over the data, and they found out that it would be best if guards were more guards were in this area at three o'clock, right. and at seven o'clock they should be here, and so on. I thought it was great. It's a great example uh, of that kind of machine learning. Uh, one place I saw I had hooked up the Connect. Huh. Uh, video projection system from Microsoft or video reading system from the Xbox and it read the video and could tell uh, fights breaking out because it can recognize people um, and it actually also worked to, t to not turn on lights and so on when an animal went by uh, uh, so saved uh, electricity just just amazing things you can do but again the point of this module the very short module is that we need to define the problem we want to solve the problem we want to solve today see young is we want to figure out um, if you like a certain movie, uh, what, what's another movie you should watch? Right. I like those. All right. Sounds good. So now let's jump to the next module, which is creating and running an experiment. And here, uh, I'm going to switch over to your monitor. All right. We're going to drive you, uh, and you're going to run the experiment full time. Okay. All right, let's let's do switch it. over let's to see Young's screen there and, uh, and see what he's got going. So. Uh, let's, uh, let's, I'm going to watch the screen. The screen for C. Young is in front of me, so if you see me looking away from C. Young, that's, that's why I'm doing that. Right. Okay, so C. Young is in the current portal. Uh, most of this stuff will be large enough that we don't have to zoom in and out. That might actually be a little disconcerting, sure. uh, but we'll explain everything we're sure. doing as we go. Sure. So he's in the machine learning thing, and he's got himself an environment set up, and if you'll take a look there, so he's got the little demo there. Why don't you click inside your demo uh, workspace? This is called and let's take a quick look at what this does so when we look inside we've got the main page and then we've got our dashboard and you can see there's a little spinning icon and nothing's really going on right, right. now so this is a fairly uh, sparse dash top we're not going to configure it or change any web services we will talk about what those mean in a moment got it but just down under the quick glance to the right there if you want to zoom in on that word sign into ML Studio. Okay, you can zoom back out and you don't need to click on that because you've already done it. So why don't you switch to your other tab? So again, the progression here is C. Young has created a workspace. He has now created uh, or, or logged in to that workspace using ML Studio. Right. Once again, he's on the main screen here. Right. So what so, am I looking at, right? Uh, yeah, what are you looking at? So we got the what's new, we've got the documentation, you can provide feedback or you can even ask a question. You've got additional resources. Would you zoom in on that on the far right hand bottom corner there? There we go. Right. Just zoom in that for me. I'd like you to, you don't need to go, uh, in other words, see Young don't go, <laughs> but everyone else, you definitely need to take a look at the Machine Learning Center. This one's fairly interesting interesting in that it is not a Microsoft only mm -hmm. environment. You'll go in there and we'll be pointing to some universities and other places. Microsoft Research develops this and it's really cool. So you can go ahead and zoom back out if you wish. Sounds good. And then let's go over and take a look at the samples. And so I showed this in the last uh, video there. We've got the sample experiments page. We can read about sample experiments or we can read about the sample data in a, in a set. And in fact, I think, go ahead and zoom out. I think you've actually popped that up on the right using, there we go. So it, when, he, when C. Young clicked on using sample experiments, we bring into this page of the documentation. So we can see all the different samples. Scroll down, I think it's number seven, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the recommender, and you don't need to zoom in on that, but the point is the documentation mm -hmm. for this is here, mm -hmm. and we can read about what it's using. It happens to be using a training model, a scoring matchbox recommender, evaluating a recommender, and then uh, we get our answers from there. And then we'll right. join some data from lots of different data sets. Speaking Great. of data sets, why don't you scroll to the top of this page and keep scrolling, good. And then on the left there, you can see, you might wanna zoom in on the left, sure. you can see that there's using sample data sets. Do you see that? So go ahead and click on that for me. And we'll let that come up. Okay, and then scroll down, sample data sets. And just right there, we don't need to go through every one of them, but if you'll zoom in a little bit for me there, the related research is the column I care a lot about. So scroll to the right there or move to the right. There we go. And you'll notice that we actually show you where we get that sample data, and that will have your data dictionary. Perfect. So the number one thing you need to do as a data scientist is to understand your data dictionary. If you don't know what you're looking at, you cannot make good projections. Okay, so let's escape out of that, and let's go back to our studio home.
So let's go take a look at the uh, sample experiments page. So go ahead and click on uh, experiments on the left. Good. And then just like we saw earlier, there's those samples. So I'd like you to click on that. Good. Now scroll, uh, make, yeah, make that column a little bigger for me. Again, you don't need to zoom at this point. Uh, those of you on the screen uh, or on the line, scroll down for me here. Let's do... Where is it at? I saw this one. There it is. So scroll, uh, zoom in on that for everybody. Uh, go ahead and click on that one. That is the movie recommender. So hit the little zoom icon or the little uh, centering icon there, and you can see that there are various objects where we bring in data on the left, we work on it, we hold out some test data, and then we bring in some data on the right that has the... Um, uh, actually has the uh, titles, right? titles right. right? The actual words rather than just numbers. It's a standard join, but it's interesting. You'll notice there's two join operations, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, and those are kind of interesting. Why would you join twice? A SQL person might look at that and go, wait a minute, what? you can do that in one join. Well, here you're doing it with two and we'll talk about why. Sounds okay, great. So we could just save this as, you see there's a button down there called save as. We could save that and we could just run it and it would be ours. You can't run the Microsoft ones, we, we've locked them. But you could save it and make your own. But instead of doing that, why don't we do this? Why don't we just recreate it from, from scratch? Sounds good. So click on the little uh, second icon on the left there. There you go. And uh, let's create a new one. So down in the bottom left, there's a button called New. I'd like you to click that. And then there's, uh, again, normally what you do is you bring in a data set. Mm -hmm. But we already have our data because this Got is it. a sample. OK, just making that very clear. Go ahead and click on the word experiment. Great, and we're immediately dropped into this into this panel. So that's great. Um, so we're going to do that uh, at this point. We're going to uh, let's open saved data sets. This is interesting. Driving driving you. So on the left hand side, can I add a title before that? Oh, actually, absolutely. Yeah, go ahead and, and just go ahead and type that in. Whatever you'd like. Call it, um, call it MVA. C Young is awesome or whatever. Real. Okay, good. I like it. Okay, good. By the way, when you save. Uh, this particular title that he's typing on the screen is not just for visualization. This is actually what it'll save as. In fact, why don't you click the save icon right now? All right. Sounds good. We haven't done a lot. Oh, we haven't done anything. So it says you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the beauty of live TV. Okay. Uh, let's uh, open the triangle next to save data sets. Sounds good. Okay. Good. I want you to find uh, movie ratings. So scroll down, scroll down, M, M, What's movie on? ratings. Yeah, grab that and drag it onto the palette. Do I have to put it exactly on? No, the, you can right. put it anywhere. No, it you can literally put it up there. Now hit your little center button like I taught you. All right. Good. And look at there. Wow. Awesome. Now, what's the first thing we do as a data scientist, Siyoung? I want to see what it looks like. I want to look at the data. Yeah. So why don't you right-click the round thing? Mm -hmm. There's probably a, a better term, by the way, round thing. That probably has a probably control, right? Bubble. Those of you in SSIS and integration <laughs> yes. services are now laughing at me. But anyway, click the round thing. We can download it or we can visualize it. Let's visualize that. It goes out and gets the data, and I'm looking at a few columns here. I've got user ID, movie ID, rating, and timestamp. So obviously these uh, statistics on user ID are kind of pointless, right? But right. the point is, user ID is probably the person mm -hmm. rating the movie, I right. would bet. Movie ID is probably a key of some sort to a movie. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to go get that in a minute. We've got to keep that in mind. Rating is probably uh, some numeric rating. And I'm looking here at min and max. And now, actually, there is sort of uh, some interesting statistics here. Min is 0 and max is 10. What do you think that probably 0 is I don't like it, yeah, 10, 10 is I liked it a lot? I think so. Yeah. I think so, yeah. OK, good. And then timestamp, I don't really know what that's for. Um, let's just keep that in mind. Sure. OK, go ahead and zoom back out. Um, now let's do this. We need to get some of those uh, things out of there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't want them all. All right. I, I just want a few. So rather than drive around and try to find what we want to do, mm -hmm. why don't you close up that that uh, data sets there? Go ahead and close up. And just in the search button, what we want to do is we want to look for the project columns. If you're mm -hmm. familiar with uh, relational theory, you project out of a series, and mm -hmm. you're you're getting a smaller group from a larger one. Yep. You type the word project, mm -hmm. and it's already found. So just grab that project columns module, drag it down there, and let go and recenter for me. All right. Good job. Now we're going to take the movie ratings data and we're going to pull it out and drag it and let go. Now what have we done? Oh, we've got an error. Already we've got an error. Hover over that. You can't see that on your screen, but it says value required. So apparently the project columns object 
needs for us to put some, some data around it. Now we could learn more. If you'll zoom in to the, um, the help button there on the right, there you go, zoom in there. We could click the more button. We're not gonna do that right now. I happen to know what it does. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, here's what let's do. Let's go get all the columns except timestamp. So right there, click on launch column selector. Good, go ahead and do that. Good. Now, we see here that we can begin to select columns that we want to come in. Now, mm -hmm. we could pick all the columns we want. Okay. But in fact, we just don't want one. All right. So let's start with all columns. That's good. Good. So we want all columns. But in the include box there, change that to exclude. All the way on the left. There you go. Exclude. And the column name we want to exclude, just click in there and find the word timestamp. By the way, the, the casing may matter. And sometimes you need to type it. It's in preview, so some buzz buttons are light lit up. Sometimes we'll have to type it, and I'll tell you what to do there. So go ahead and do timestamp, and then click the checkbox, and our error goes away. Very nice. Okay, good. So we're in good shape there. All right, so we've done that. Um, let's see. We need to do our holdout data. Mm -hmm. So we now got the data we want, and we need to hold out some for testing. We want the system to be able to check itself, and we need okay. to do that at this stage in the raw data. Remember, this is a supervised event. Mm -hmm. We've already got ratings for the movies, right. so we need this thing to check itself to make sure it worked. Got so it. why don't you t type the word split in the search box? Split. And guess what split does? Split finds the split operation. And we have two, partition and split and split. We're just gonna stick with split. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things that I need to, uh, to tell you to uh, just trust me on. So pull right. that out, recenter it. Good job. I love this centering feature. It's just, it's really nice. Brilliant. Um, let's bring the data out of the project columns and into the split operation. There we go. Now, look on the right side there and zoom in for me on the properties panel. And you'll notice that you've got different ways of splitting. Mm -hmm. um, we are not going to change any of these. We're holding out about 50% of the data. <laughs> That's a lot. Um, the more data we hold out, mm -hmm. the, um, the better the testing mm, and the less accurate the prediction. Right. So in theory, I can do like an 80 to 20 split. Normally, you start with 80-20 mm -hmm. and you come up with reasons not to do that. Got it. 70-30 okay. is some people's preference and so on. Got it. You'll have to refer back to your stats books about why. Got it. Sounds We're not going to change any of this. Notice you could reseed it. You could randomize the split if your data was in a certain order and so on. We're just going to go ahead and escape out of this. Got it. I just wanted to show you kind of what we got there. Okay. All right. Now we need to do something with the data. So now we need to figure out how we're going to train our system. It needs to learn. Sounds so good. let's type in the word train in the search box. Can I make some room for it? Uh, sure, if you'd like. All right. Although it will do that for you, but that's fine too. Okay. So just type in the word train. Train. Mm -hmm. And type space and match. There we go. Oh, yeah. Let's do train matchbox recommender. That's the one. All right. All right. Good. Drag that on. Notice it has three inputs. Yauchiruni. Okay. Here we go. Um, let's connect the leftmost split. That's Excellent. the not testing data. Okay. Let's drag that to the leftmost train matchbox recommender. Now, by the way, these positions can matter. <laughs> so you need to be careful. By the way, one thing we didn't mention if you would click on that line you just made, Notice that it highlights. You could just hit the delete key here and it would remove that. So if you want to go ahead and do that, go ahead and do that. Okay, good. Now put it back. <laughs> okay, good. Now we fixed our problem. Okay. All right. Now click on the train matchbox recommender object there. Okay, and give me a center, by the way. All right. Okay, good. You notice on the right, the train matchbox recommender, and once again, we could go learn about it. It's a Bayesian inference engine, mm -hmm. but it has a number of traits and a number of algorithms. Mm. So what this means is how many things should I look at to see how common they are and how many kinds of algorithms should I use to do that? Mm. Now, in the real data science world mm. before Azure ML, you had to come up with these algorithms mm -hmm and you had to figure out how many traits to do. Right. This way the system can do it for you. So this is another power. Right. So let's change those, by the way. Let's take those traits, let's do 20 traits, and let's do 10 algorithms. That's a lot. 
So this is going to run a little slow. Uh, hopefully for today, we're not going to have to. <laughs> but we have the power of Azure on the back end, right? We have the power of Azure. Uh, right. Yeah, hopefully the power of Azure is going to be nice. <laughs> Why don't you click the save box? We've done All some right. work here. I, I, think I'd, I think I'd like that to be a little, yeah. Okay. Um, now, you know what we need to do next is we need to score this thing. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like you to do is up in the search box now, I'd like you to type the word score space match. Okay, good. See the score match box recommender? Drag that somewhere on the screen. Uh, you can even put, there you go, down, and then you can just let go, and then you can recenter it, and it'll, it'll fix all that for you. Good. All right. Yeah, that's probably good. Okay. Um, and recenter that for me. Good. So now notice, this takes a lot of inputs. Wow. And so this is going to take us a little bit of work here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to connect from the train matchbox recommender, the output, mm -hmm. all the way to the left. Notice that the system turns it red anyway. We can't put it anywhere else. So that at least is a blessing. So we do that. Good. What we've done is we've taken the trained data mm -hmm. and shoved it into the scoring mechanism. Awesome. But to do that, we need to get the split data that we hid mm -hmm. from the system, mm -hmm. and we need to give that to the scoring. So I'd like you to grab the split round thingy. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good object. And I'd like you to bring it all the way down to the leftmost score matchbox recommender and let go. Good job. Right. Now notice our errors went away, everything. Okay, click on the score matchbox recommender to make it highlighted. And let's go take a look on the right in our properties and we'll talk a little bit about what we're gonna change here. We're going to change it to related items. Now what this lets me, you don't have to do it now. What this lets me do is this particular mm -hmm. kind of scoring mechanism mm -hmm. can check lots of things. Oh, okay. Uh, that's another power of Azure. You don't have to come up with different tools. There's one tool that will usually do several things, and we'll see that in a minute. And uh, we're just going to leave everything else alone, the defaults. Mm -hmm. But what we want it to do is the kind of scoring we're due is how much is this thing like the other thing? Great. Okay, so go ahead and zoom out and change that item recommendation to related items. Related items. Ah, interesting. So you'll notice then it, uh, it has all kinds of things that it does there. We're just going to leave that alone for the moment. But here's one of the powers of Azure is that we didn't have to come up with that algorithm. Right. We didn't have to write any code, none of that. Awesome. Okay, good. Now we need to see our sort of final output for this, mm -hmm. which is our evaluation. We need, we need to get the answer. So Can I search for it? Uh, sure. Backspace over all that and type in evaluate recommender. In other words, tell me if it worked. So it's the second one down. There you go. Grab that, put it below, and make some, uh, make some room and recenter. Good job. Excellent. All right. Now, once again, we're going to need to connect the score, and we're going to need uh, the split again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so grab the score and take it to the left. Okay. Good. And grab the split data again. Mm -hmm and bring it into the evaluation. Now, the why here becomes a little more uh, nuanced, so I'm not gonna spend a great deal of time other than it's sort of checking the data properly. Okay? Right. So we've right. scored it and given it, we think it's this good if you do it this way. Mm -hmm. That needed some split data. Got it. But to evaluate it, we also need to split data. Got it. So we can connect things multiple times mm -hmm. as you're seeing here. Right. You know, in essence, uh, we're kind of done with one quick change. On the evaluate recommender properties on the right there, mm -hmm. you'll notice that we're currently doing an item recommendation. That's not really what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I'm actually looking for are these things similar. So pull that down and you want related items again. Okay. Good. So now we've, remember we did that just now with the score. Mm -hmm. We have to do the same thing. These are two separate operations that we've done. Got it. So let me make sure we, let's go ahead and save. Okay. And this is a good place to talk about what we've done so far. All right. We started out with movie ratings, mm -hmm. all right? Good stuff there. We projected some columns out, meaning we didn't want the timestamp. We just felt it would just muddy the waters if we did that. Right. Um, so the, the split is just the straight split. Remember, mm -hmm. we did not use the segmented split mm -hmm. or anything else. It's mm -hmm. just the regular split. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you happen to be following along at home, mm -hmm. go look at the sample. Uh, in fact, the way I originally did this was 
I went into one web browser and I brought up the sample, mm -hmm. and I went into a separate web browser and brought up Azure ML, mm -hmm. and I recreated by just clicking on the icons and reading the properties. Right. Literally, that's how I did this the first time. Then I went back and understood it, mm -hmm. and now we're building it again. All right. All right, good stuff. So. Interestingly enough here, we projected our columns out and we've split the data. Mm -hmm. Remember, we did a 50-50. Mm -hmm. Then we trained it. We said, go use some data. We only gave it part of the data mm -hmm. to go look at that. Mm -hmm. And then what we did from there was we scored that training mm -hmm. by showing it, here's what I think the answers are. Remember mm -hmm. your, your car and your taco? Yep. We did that same thing, the car and the taco, we took from the rightmost split mm -hmm. and put it into the scorer. Got it. Now the score came out and we have that data and we shove that into the evaluation tool, which is gonna give us our final answer. However, we also needed to get that split data again mm -hmm. so it could evaluate properly and check and make sure the car and the taco were different. Got so, it. Essentially, we're done. The only problem is if we ran this right now, we would not get um, any of our uh, titles. titles. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the way it's joined at the moment, which is none at all, it actually isn't gonna work properly. So let's do this. Let's go get some more data. Mm -hmm. So up in your search window, mm -hmm. once again, grab, uh, type in IMDB, and then we're gonna look for movie titles. There it is, grab it and pull it over. I should, I should state here, uh, this is uh, uh, not uh, uh, this is not the real IMDb data. Of course, we don't want to get into trouble here. Of course, uh, yeah. this is um, approved. Yeah. Uh, by the way, sometimes these arrows will go behind boxes and in front, and that's like an eternal problem. Mm -hmm. You can move them around, but there is no uh, click a button and it just rearranges everything. Okay. This is not an entity relationship diagram. You can right. do what C Young is doing and move things around. Sure. Um, I tend not to worry about that as much. Uh, I tell you what, let's do. Click on the rightmost split bar, mm -hmm. just that bar, not the button, the bar itself. Mm -hmm. uh, go down a little bit and click on the line. Go down. Nope. Go down some more. Down some more. The actual line itself down at the bottom that's connecting them. This one? No, down. Move your mouse down and to the left. Click on that. Notice that the blue line lights up. Mm -hmm. So if you do kind of get lost in where connectors are going, right. you can just click on the line, it'll kind of visually show yes, you. Okay, yes. good. All right, so we have the IMDB movie titles. What's the first thing a data scientist does? I want to look into it. Look at the data, right? right. Click the little round thingy and go to visualize. Right. Good job. Okay, we see here we have movie ID and movie name. Scroll down a bit for me. I see. So what this is, is it's got the key. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have that. Mm -hmm. That's This is goodness. Mm -hmm. And then on the right, it's got the words. Yes. Okay, so go ahead and close this out. Good job. Okay, so we've added that and we've visualized it. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things we need to do is clean this up a bit. Okay. Uh, this will happen from time to time. Right. You may want to relabel something. Mm -hmm. You may want to... Um, change a data type. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do that with a metadata editor. So in the search box, type in metadata, and it. just grab it and pull it down below the DB movie titles. Once again, we're cleaning data. This is real common. Hit your center button there for me. All right. Good job. And I want you to connect the movie titles into the metadata editor. And it lights up and we get an error. Hover over that error, it says value required. So we see that, so um, there we go. Um, the, there's a question on the thing that says, are there nodes for plotting different types of plots? There are, and that would be in the R or the statistical functions. We're not gonna do those right now. Okay, um, taking a look at the right there, we need to go get the columns we want mm -hmm. and the stuff we're gonna do with them. Right. So let's launch our column selector. This time what I'd like you to do is just stick with no columns, but include column names of, click that. I want the movie ID and the movie name. Good job, so what have I done? I've just brought those two columns in, nothing more than that so far. So go ahead and check the box there, good. Now, we wanna change the data type. Let's change that to a string. Why? Because that's what the data needed. Mm. Um, we're worried about the numbers being computed, not as a key, but Got as it. a numeric. Got and it. so we're just gonna change everybody to string. Mm -hmm. The reason why is it's a mixed number and some text mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. The system needs to infer, mm -hmm. no, no, don't treat the words as a number, treat them as text. Got okay, it. good. All right, good, we're done there. Now we're almost done here, we're almost done. All we need to do here is we need to, um, uh, grab our join. So go up and type join, because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna join the data on the left mm -hmm. 
to the data on the right. That's okay. very important to keep that. That's why I like this visualization. Yeah. So grab me a join operation, put it below metadata. Good. Now, here we go. We're going to grab the metadata editor. We're going to drag it down to the leftmost join. Okay, so everybody knows what we're doing here. We've grabbed data from the set. It's just come in. We're in great shape. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to connect the score. Grab the score output. There you go, that one. And you're going to connect it into the rightmost join. Now, what have we done here? Well, we've taken the data itself. We've gotten the names on the left, and we've gotten the score of the data mm -hmm. on the right. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing that in. So what kind of join? First of all, let's go get some columns. Mm -hmm. uh, click the launch column selector in the join. So we'll begin with, um, uh, let's do, you don't need to start with any columns. Just to include auto name. Let's do that. Let's do item. And you'll have to type it, and it's uppercase. There we go. Uh, item, and click OK. Good, so that is the left join column. Now move down and you see we need to get the right join column. Right. It was called item before, mm -hmm. but in this one, it's actually called movie ID. Remember that? Okay. Uh, so we're going to type in same thing, movie ID, space ID. Good, 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 perfect. Now again, how do we know this? We knew it from the previous uh, when we were looking at the data. So go ahead and check OK there. This is a left outer join. So you're going to click left join. Good, left outer join. And we're not going to keep the right columns as a key. So d ditch that. Good, perfect. You know what? We should save it. All right. We should save Good it. Good idea. And you know what? Let's, I think we're done almost. Well, I want to tell you, what, once you run it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk to each other for a few minutes. Right. So, Buck, this is slightly looking like an, like an SSIS ETL package for the BI folks out there. Yeah. Is it a similar process to that? So is it a similar process, this, this whole kind of environment mm -hmm. with the drag and drop? Yeah. And these, looks pretty with, similar. With all the it? arrows. Yeah. Um, the dirty little secret, and it's not actually a dirty little secret, <laughs> it's a great secret, um, is that those teams uh, work together on this. Uh, so this is, yeah, you're going to see a lot of similarity and holdover to these things. Now, as this runs, let's go down, let's take a look. Uh, we've got an error, so we'll switch back to the screen, mm -hmm. and let's take a look at what we've done wrong here. So click on the little X, and it says, number of selected uh, columns in data set does not equal three. All right, so what did we think we did wrong here? So this is live, folks. This is a real live error that we've done that we did incorrectly. Do you okay, think? what do we think we did wrong? I tell you what let's do. I'm going to pop up on my screen. You don't need to switch to my screen right now, but I'm going to pop up onto my screen, and I'm going to do what I do all the time, which is sign into Azure ML Studio, mm -hmm. and I'm actually going to go to the sample experiments page, and I'm going to take a look at what we've got, and we're going to wander through what we've done incorrectly. Sounds good. So I'm popping that up, and I see that immediately what I've done, I think, uh, if I have this correct, is I've taken the matchbox recommender. Do we have that going to the left? The score matchbox recommender? Mm -hmm. We do? Look at it again. This one is, is it wrong? Uh, we flipped them. Uh, so click that. This one. Yeah, click that delete. and delete it. Okay. There we go. And click that and delete it. This one. And let's take the metadata ed editor to the right. All right. So the direction <laughs> matters. And, yeah, it right. does. And it takes your score and put it to the left. Great job. Now we got to go fix everything. So click on your join operation again. Okay. And here we go. Uh, item, movie ID, look, it kept everything. Mm, okay. All right, save it and run it. Let's see if we fix the problem. Got it. All right, live TV, folks. Uh, we'll see if this works. And we can just stay on the screen while we talk. Right. Uh, and, and what I wanted to point out, uh, you had asked a few moments mm -hmm. ago, uh, does that in fact uh, look like the SSI stuff? And it does. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll see this become more and more uh, prevalent between the two. Got However, it. what I really like about this mm -hmm. is I can be in any browser, any mm -hmm. type, mm -hmm. and this just works all the time. Mm -hmm. So I can be on a Mac or a Linux box mm -hmm. or, or whatever, right. and that's going to work just fine. I also noticed that some of these have check marks and some of these have clock 
icons. Yeah, the clock icons means that's the segment that it's working on, mm -hmm. and the checkbox means that that's done. So let's zoom out and see if we got a better result this time. And if we didn't, this is the science, folks. This is the thing. We take a look and see what's broken and what's not. And by the way, I was driving you, and I probably said left when I meant right, and <laughs> right when I meant left. Right. So, uh, by the way, you'll see this quite often in your own experiments. You'll actually uh, see these kinds of things happen. You'll notice there's some latency here that we didn't have last time. Mm -hmm. That's an artifact as well. So we've, got a, we've been running for about a minute here. Uh, it feels longer. Uh, and we've got an error down there, but let's right-click and visualize the join if we can. Okay. Take a look, and you'll notice you can't. And the reason why is the published output isn't correct. Mm -hmm. So on the evaluate recommender, did I bring the split into the left and the score into the right? Or did I backwards you that as well? I think I backwards you that as well. All right, well. so you got everything backwards. All right. Okay, yeah, yeah. So on the split, mm -hmm. delete that line, not that one, but the next one. There you okay. go. Delete that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And uh, delete the, did you delete that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And uh, that was on the evaluate, right? Right. Okay. Uh, the leftmost, uh, delete the leftmost one as well on the evaluate. This one. Yes, sir. Good job. Now flip it the other way. Take the, 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 that split to the left. Mm -hmm. This one goes here. Good. Excellent. And score to the right. Boy, I must have just score had my instruction. Right. I, I'm used to driving. All so right. let's save it and let's run it. We'll take another minute. All right. <laughs> and that's fun. okay. This is, again, part of the science when you do this. So this will take about another minute. Sure. Now, this is um, something that we need to understand about this as we're working together mm -hmm. on this project. Got it. You will get experiments that won't work correctly. Mm -hmm. Those error codes uh, can get deep quickly. Mm -hmm. But if you take your time, mm -hmm. click on the error code, you'll mm -hmm. get a numeric that says what's wrong. Right. Uh, like most things in computing science, it can be a little difficult mm -hmm. when you get the error message. It might not be the real error. Got it. And people have asked me, why isn't that true? Why does it tell me, why does SQL Server or Exchange mm -hmm. tell me this one error when it's really in a different error? Mm -hmm. Well, as we know, these things are complicated systems. Got it. So when they fall out at a particular step, mm -hmm. that's what's reported. Now, Got what it. caused that step might be either further back in the chain mm -hmm. or farther along down the chain. Okay. This is looking a little better. I kind of like this. I see the um, green check marks. I see green check marks everywhere. That's good. Let's yeah. see if the join works. That's the last right. operation. Right. that it's trying. And speaking of working together, um, can multiple people work on the same project? They can. Yeah, they right. can work on the same project, or uh, as, you're, as you're showing right there, you could click and go to a different workspace. You don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what? We got all, all green arrows. Oh, it's already done. super happy. All right. uh, apparently, my lefts and rights are gone. Uh, maybe I should have sat on your left side or, or your right side or something. All right, let's right click and see what we got and right. join. So this is the final output. Let's visualize it. Hey, look at there. Scroll down for me. And it says, if you like movie number 1789788, that is um, Talash. I, I actually don't know this movie. Mm -hmm. um, then you'll like movie 816711. I don't know what that is. I don't know either. Um, why don't you close that? This is not very useful. Why don't we do this? Let's add another join. All right. Add another join. You sure? I, I'm sure, and I'm going to tell you the right rights and lefts this time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Drag that to the bottom. What we need is I want the movie names again. All right. So how would I do that? You know what? The metadata editor has the names in it. Does it? Okay. So I'd like you to grab that and drag it to the right. The right. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. The real right. Now, we've got the join that has the right movies. Mm -hmm on the left, right. so why don't we grab the output of the next join, that top join there, mm -hmm. and put it in the input of this join. Sounds good. All right, now we're clicked on there. We've got an error, obviously, because we haven't done it. Let's go get some columns. All right. Let me see. Um, why don't you leave it as no columns, mm -hmm. include column name. Uh, we want related item. That's okay. the one we're going after, right? We want. Right. We know the movie, mm -hmm. we want the related movie. Okay, good, so click related items mm -hmm. and close that. Got it. And then um, we also need the rightmost one, so I think that one's gonna be joined on movie ID. So let's okay. go type in movie ID there, movie good. ID? It populated that for us. This is the key now, this is not what we want, this is the key. Key, All right. got it. So click okay. All right, let me see, let's do a left outer join here again. Okay. 
And um, because again, I want all the things from the left that right. match and right. only the things that match from the right. The, the and the right get rid keys? of the key columns because we've just got one key. We don't need these either. Okay, okay, save it. All right. Cross your fingers. All right. <laughs> and run it. Let's go. <laughs> so we've got another minute. Uh, hopefully this will run fairly quickly. All right, now yeah. what's the output of all this mm -hmm. when we're done? Right. Um, let's talk that through while this is running and sure. we'll go back to the slides or, or the screen in just a minute. Sure. What is the output of, of what's being run? The output is mm -hmm. we have fed it a series of data right. that has people who like this movie, movie. like this movie, mm -hmm. but it only had keys in it. Right. We wandered that through some uh -huh. algorithms. Remember, uh -huh. that was the next step. We right. cleaned the data. Right. We wandered through the algorithms. Uh -huh. We scored it. Right. And then we came out with our recommender engine. Right. Then we wanted the names. Right. So we took a whole other data set, put it mm -hmm. to the right. Mm -hmm. We cleaned that data up. The movie titles. Yes. Right. And yeah. we got a bunch of, and it had the key. Right. He's got to be there. Got it. And then we uh, took and projected columns out of that, mm -hmm. the ones we wanted, mm -hmm. and then we added some joints. Got it. So that's Got all it. we've done. Right. It's really fairly simple, okay. the things we've done. Okay. Now, when it's done, right. uh, the output is gonna be something where we can see, if you like this movie, you'll like that one. Awesome. And that's pretty interesting. Did it finish? It's finished. It's finished? Let's right. go back to your screen. And all right. Did it go green? Uh, Look at yes. that, my left and right are, are back drive. and correct. Why don't yeah, you yeah. right click the uh, round thingy at the bottom, Okay. good, and go to visualize. Hopefully this good will stuff. work. Hopefully Scott will use proper names and not round thingy. Okay, I'm gonna stick with that though because now I'm nervous that my experiment failed. Right. Okay, here we go, look at there, it worked. If right. you like Talash, you'll love World Z. I don't know what either one of those are. Me um, if you liked Oblivion, you'll like King Kong. Okay, I, I'll agree with that. Um, <laughs> right. I didn't like Oblivion and so I don't like probably King Kong either. Um, scroll down, Iron Man, here now we're talking. Iron Man, you'll like Star Trek. Okay. Sci-fi, maybe. Done. Yeah, yeah okay. that's All obvious. Right. Yeah. Iron Man, Lone Survivor, done. Wreck-It Ralph, really? That's an interesting... If you like Iron Man, <laughs> you'll like Wreck-It Ralph, which is a, a, an animation. If you have children, maybe, yeah. You know, most people who watch sci-fi uh -huh. uh, like animation as well. Also, right. a lot of people who watch sci-fi are 12 years old, and so uh, they're also going to like you, right? So, so we might want to dig into this and yeah. add some demographics. We maybe should. we'd we add should. some demographics. I like it. It worked. It works. Now... This is what's called a closed system at the mm -hmm. moment. Right. Um, so um, the questions might be, okay, why did we put things left mm -hmm. and right? Mm -hmm. Why is this below mm -hmm. that? That is the data science part. Got it. So it's going to take a little, um, it's going to take a little learning to know when to use each algorithm. Remember right. when we very started, I yep. promised that I'd make a, mm -hmm. Uh, see Young, a data scientist in an hour, and, and that's really hard to do. Um, so you'll need to read why you do it. However, if you do this, it's like chess, if you've ever played chess, and it's a great deal like mm -hmm. SQL, if you've ever worked with a sequential language like SQL. Mm -hmm. It's building blocks. We brought the data in, we cleaned the data up, we split the data to hold out our set. Mm -hmm. We then knew to go get that algorithm because we had grabbed uh, the knowledge of what those algorithms do mm -hmm. and we created an experiment. Mm -hmm. It's an experiment. What you should do is create another one right. using a different algorithm entirely. And, and again, ours are black boxes and have algorithms inside, but you might create a whole different kind of thing to figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then maybe check that with something that you're more familiar with, like mm -hmm. R. Mm -hmm. As you saw, you can drag R scripts onto mm -hmm. the screen. We have a bunch and you can load your own and check to see, yeah, these are getting about the same thing. So I now know this R script equals this black box. So you're saying that we can actually input or bring in your R packages. You can. Right. You can bring in your own R packages. We have an R engine built in, awesome. and that's kind of nice uh, because a lot of people have a lot of time and effort uh, invested in R, and uh, that's a good thing. I right. like R a lot. Uh, I use R Studio when I use R a great deal, and I go find packages all the time where people have done my work for me, uh, so I've done that. But let's go back to your screen for a sure. moment and, okay. and talk a little bit about this. This is what's called a closed system, and it's closed for two reasons. One is, uh, we run it right here and we only run it here. Got it. Well, that's great, but you're not going to let everybody on the planet mm -hmm. run it inside your Azure ML Studio. Sure. You need some way to get this data out. Got it. The second reason it's a closed system is that movie ratings at the top. Mm -hmm. Not the IMDb titles, mm -hmm. that's sort of lookup data, and that's right. common right. among anything you might do. Right. Census data might be common. Right. But what I want to do is I want to feed this thing data. Hmm. Uh, I want to feed this thing data. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, what I might do is make a model that would predict the winner of game seven. 
By the way, uh, if you would like to do that, go out to Bing, the world's best search engine, and type in who will win game seven and uh, see what you get back. Guess what Bing uses behind the covers to make the predictions that it's been doing very well on? It uses this. Wow. Yeah. So uh, it uses other things as well. I don't want to <laughs> oversimplify this, right. but it actually uses these same kinds of algorithms. You have the power to do that, and you could predict if you make any money off of a bet, you know, send a little our way, obviously. Uh, uh, but yes, you can do predictive analytics like this. But we do have this sort of closed system. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need to do next um, is talk about, I'm not sure if you'll show it, mm -hmm. but we need to talk about how you would send data to the system. Mm -hmm. Put your own data up there so that it could be dynamic. Right. Because uh, new movies are added all the time, so this system wouldn't be very useful. Right. Even if you could send it data, you're still missing one thing, mm -hmm. and that's the ability to get the data back out. Right. In like an iPad or a Surface tablet mm -hmm. or a Windows phone, something mm -hmm. like that. So I think the next segments we should talk about is how do you publish this data back out? How do right. you get it back out? Mm -hmm. And how do you send stuff in? Wow. So that's great stuff. Um, we won't be doing the uh, model to predict the game seven tonight. I don't think we're going to have that kind of time. My lefts and rights were, were bad. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll stay away from that. I'm yeah. pretty happy that everything ran and ran well. I hope you've enjoyed these two modules. We've got two more to go, uh, so I hope you'll stick with us. Again, these will be recorded, and they'll be available in two to three weeks. You'll get an email if you've registered for this, and you'll be able to share that. We'd love for you to share it on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, Instagram and every place that you post uh, and let people know. And I hope you've learned something today, and I certainly have. Um, I need to learn my lefts and rights better. That's number one. And I can, in fact, drive someone else to do my work, and that is a good takeaway for me. And thanks to you, I feel like a data scientist already. All right, All right. good stuff. All right. Listen, thank you, everyone, for being here. We'll see you in about 10 minutes. All right. Thank you. Maybe 15. 15. Let's make it 15. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's go get some lunch. Thanks. See you in a bit. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Azure Machine Learning Jumpstart. My name is Scott Klein. I'm here again with uh, Si Young. Hi again. So Si Young is our newly minted uh, Azure Data Scientist. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel, feel good? Like, yes. So we're going to continue where Buck, uh, where Buck left off, you and Buck left off. Mm -hmm. So let's recap really quick. So uh, what we did, is, so let me introduce myself really quick before we, before we recap. Sure, sure. So uh, I'm a senior technical evangelist in the uh, data experience. Uh, we used to be DPE here in Microsoft. Uh, I speak uh, all over the world talking about all our data, uh, data platform technologies. Uh, and if you haven't seen me before, I am a... Um, uh, I have the show on Channel 9 called Data Exposed, and I'm the host of that. And so we get to talk about uh, all the cool data technologies that Microsoft has. It's a lot of fun. So awesome. we will be uh, covering machine learning here pretty quick. We'll probably have you on here real quick. All right. All right. So we've talked, you got you and Buck sure. uh, just spent the last couple hours mm -hmm. talking about modules one and two. Yeah, so a quick summary is that you know I learned how to you know, create a experiment inside machine learning. Mm -hmm. um, we also went through some of the foundational aspects of what machine learning is. Um, he made me into a data scientist on how to, you know, define a data set, project some columns to make sure that we have the right data set with filters and all that. Um, we also made some joins with different types of data sets and we tried to create a recommendation engine to see which movies would relate to other movies. And so that was kind of a fun experiment uh, that I did with Buck. And so uh, I think in this module, in the next module, we'll find out how I can make my experiment and show it to the world um, through right. publishing, right? Yeah, and how can we actually make, you've got a lot of data, mm -hmm. right? How can you now monetize that, right. Right? right? Make that available, things like, you know, airline data, things like movie data. How can you make that available so others can consume that, right? Right. Um, you know, it's really interesting as we were monitoring the, um, you know, the, the hashtag. So if you have a question, you know, feel free to post that question to uh, hashtag Azure ML. As we were monitoring that and monitoring the uh, questions coming through the, the website, a lot of people were actually following along and actually were successful and did just what you did. So it was actually, this was a, it was really good watching people be able to say, yeah, it worked, woo, right? Awesome. It was really good. Right. 
So now we're going to take it to the next step and say, how can we now take the work that C. Young did and publish that to the Azure market, data marketplace? Um, because this is something you guys might want to consider as you know you have this different data. You want to make that available to consume to uh, other companies and start monetizing you, the, the data that you have. Right. What if I'm a real data scientist and I have this real awesome you know prediction model I can predict who will win you know the game number seven this this evening? Yep. Um, and I want to, maybe I can make a few bucks out of it. That's right. Uh, by the way, uh, during the break we actually wrote a quick model. We found out that the Giants are going to win. Right. So uh, <laughs> place your bets now. <laughs> right. So yeah, so yeah, exactly, right? We want to, if I have this great set of data, mm -hmm. how do I make that? How do I make money off of that? Got so it. with that, what we're going to do is let's actually talk about how can we monetize our Azure ML application mm -hmm. by placing that in the, in the Azure marketplace. Make that data available for others to consume. Got it. Uh, if, if there's data and it's valuable, why don't we make it available, right? So that's what we want to do. Um, so what if we want to, for example, um, develop, we've got this data like we talked about, right? We, we're managing, we're sitting on, on a lot of this, uh, on a large set of data. We just walk, watched you and, and uh, Buck walk through this state of the art, this wonderful UI of how to start uh, understanding and putting together this data. We, wanted to, we want to deploy that data, mm -hmm. make that available to any type of device, right? So, and, and deploy that very quickly, mm -hmm. not just, okay, there, there it is, but how can we make that available and make that available quickly? Right. Right? And, and so, it, it typically, how long do you think that would take? Yeah, well, if it was on premises, I would have to stand up a server, stand up services, I need consultants, IT, and all these people helping me set it up. Yep. Um, it would take days and weeks and months. Um, but you know, how, how quick is it when I use Azure? Yeah, so in, in what we just watched you and Buck walk through, what it, we were able to accomplish something just in you know, not that long, right? right? So yeah, on-prem it might take a while, but because we're using the benefits of Azure, uh, spin that up very quickly, right? Right, right. Um, and make that available to our users, right? Awesome. Okay. So uh, we've got this data. Now the whole goal here is, it's really a two-step process, but what we want to do then is make that and publish that experiment mm -hmm. out on the, and, and that data out on the Azure Marketplace, sure. right? So what if we could, in essence, harness the power of open source, harness the power of, uh, of Azure, mm -hmm. and as we saw, combine the power with these enterprise-tested Algorithms. Mm -hmm. you know, we just spent you and Buck walk through right. hours and just a whole slew of these different types of algorithms right. and uh, methodologies that you could plug into right. your experiment right. and then make that available to and, everybody. And speaking of algorithms, I heard that one of the reasons that we made um, Azure Machine Learning a commercial product was that we've been using this internally for many years in the Bing Services division, in Xbox, and in yep. Cortana. And I think they thought that these algorithms were, val were valuable and we had customers asking for those as well. And so I think one of the reasons that we've you know, created this product is that we are offering those, the same algorithms that we use internally for others to use as well. For others to use right. as well, yeah. right. So. And, and the, the whole concept around this is that it, it, uh, deploy in minutes, mm -hmm. right, by using these algorithms right. that, we've, that we've already you know, tried and true tested, mm -hmm. right? But deploy that to any data in any device right. very quickly, very rapidly. Right. right and expand that reach to the masses, right? Got and that's it. what we're really trying to get to, Got right? It. Is make this, this, these experiments and this data available, right? right to the is reach. hyperscale the word that we're trying to use? Like, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hyperscale. Like, <laughs> We've been whoop, in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, that's, you know, but that is a very good point, right? It's, it, it, it is hyperscale, right. right? Very easily take what we just, uh -huh. you just worked on, uh -huh. scale that out, right? Uh, sounds good. All right. So um, with that, what we want to do, um, we want to, you know, it's really the ability to say, you know, what could we achieve, mm -hmm. you know, as the slide says, what could we achieve with this? And really the, the you know, I hate to, you know, overuse a phrase, but you know, the possibilities are endless here, right? right. It's, I don't think there's anything that we can't do right. in, in terms of that. So, All right. All right. so what we're going to do here, so we're going to put you on the spot again. Okay, right? are you right. going to be the driver again? Uh, I'm going to be the driver <laughs> right. again. You're going to be the sure. guinea pig. All right, you did such a good, time, a good <laughs> right. job last time. Really? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, you are the newly minted data, data right. scientist, right? Exactly. Um, which, is, which is awesome. So um, if you are following along, feel free to uh, follow along at home as well. Um, there are certain things we'll point out um, 
you'll be able to follow along uh, for, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain things that if you want to publish, you have to go set up your publishing profile, things like that, and you have to get approved for that. Um, that might take some time, but you'll at least be able to follow for the most part. Right. Right. So, and we'll point those, those parts we'll out. We'll point those, okay. par the, right. those parts out, right? So let's actually jump out now. So a quick introduction. Let's actually jump out and do a demo. So let's switch over to your desktop again. All right. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to walk you through uh, how to publish this and make this make your experiment available uh, as uh, make this data available on the Azure Marketplace. All right, sounds good. All right, so what we want to do is you're already in the uh, in the uh, Azure ML Studio, mm -hmm. right? So the first thing you do it's really a two step process, okay. right? The first thing we need to do is we need to publish this as a web service because really what uh, happens behind the scenes is it's really just a no data service. Got it. Right. So when people want to consume this, they're really just consuming a no data a, a no data service. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, uh, and we'll see that as we go through, there'll be an old data link, you know, and, 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 and we'll use the API to get that, right? Got it, okay. Uh, in module four, we'll actually talk about how to consume, you know, use an API to consume that old data service. So, Sounds good. In this module, it's a two-step process. We first have to publish this out mm -hmm. as, a, as a web service, mm -hmm. and then publish that to production, right. and then go consume that right. uh, with, uh, and make that available in the data market. So publish it out to the data marketplace. Got it. So we're going to start here in the Azure ML Studio. We wanted to do less slides, more demo. Okay. So here we are. We're in the Azure ML Studio, and the first thing we need to do is, anytime you want to make a publish, uh, make a web service out of this, and you know this when you're dealing with web services, right. you need a input and an output. Okay. Right. So this is an interesting one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an input and an output. Now, typically in in this experiment, and we talked about this earlier. Um, this is movie data, right, right? Right. So our movie data, we've already got our input, right? Okay. So we could really put our input uh, anywhere, but right. typically when you're going to publish a web service, and depending on what you, as the viewer, are going to do from your web service, you right. probably have an, uh, a, a, a kind of different type of your input. own data sets yeah. or your own kind of uh, test materials. Yeah, I think for this particular demo, it's a, it's a closed loop like yep. told out, and so it might not make the most sense of making this a public web service, but for the purpose of the demo. Of the demo. Yeah, we'll do that. Right. Yeah. So we are just going to, we're going to put a, a, we're going to put an endpoint just on, uh, so we're going to do it on the metadata editor. Mm -hmm. We're going to put an endpoint there, right? And then we're going to put an output on just the join. We need an output. All right. right? So realistically, this is, yep, set so it as output. Uh, there we go. So we, what we did is we clicked on the bottom. Buck called these little circle thingies, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. So uh, my my goal here out of this today is get my lefts and rights uh, right. Okay. Right, and maybe come up with a new name for the little circle thingies. Got it. <laughs> right. That makes sense. Right. So we have our input and output now. Really, uh, in your your experiment mm -hmm. or your model, right? Uh, you might you'll probably have uh, a different. Uh, yeah, it looks like you you probably put these on the score model and then uh, create you know create tests on that. As create well. tests on that, sure, right? Sure. That's really the best practice. But since yeah. uh, you know, again, this is you know, just to walk you through an example, right? Got it. All right, so let's uh, save this. Okay. And just to make sure that we're good, let's go ahead and run it again. All right. Right. Now, what we're doing here, it, it already ran once, so this shouldn't take too long. Hopefully, yes. It, yeah, hopefully, yeah. right? But just, you know, we should see some check boxes really quick, and then what we're really doing is saying, okay, we're green, a couple check boxes. Mm -hmm. The whole goal, what we're doing here is we said, yep, everything's good. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do then is once this runs successfully, we're going to say that, that um, we're going to say publish web service. But again, right. again, this is a web service, right? Right. So after I publish it, um, do I have to put it in a staging place, or is there any special steps after that as well? Yeah, that's a great question. Right. So typically, what this does is this does not go immediately into production. Got it. Right. So which is what, it, this is awesome. It actually goes into a staging place. Got it. Uh, a staging environment, and, and it succeeded. As you can see, it succeeded. Mm -hmm. It actually goes into a staging environment, mm -hmm. and you actually have to tell it, okay, go put it in production. Got it. Right? Okay. So it's a multi-step process. Got right? it. Okay. So go ahead and click uh, down there, uh, Publish Web Service. Ready? All right. And go ahead and click Yes. So you're following along at home. Hopefully this is working for you. And what we're, ta what, uh, we're automatically taken to our real experiment. Now, uh, there's a couple points we need to make here, right? So this is not quite in production, right? But you'll see here that we have several things. We have an API key, mm -hmm. right? And we have several endpoints, right? So we look at the, because uh, you can see there, it says staging services. Mm -hmm. So we're in staging, Got not it. quite in production, Got it. right? 
I, you see here we have a couple endpoints, right? Noticed, we, I noticed there we have two API help pages. Yep. Uh, one for request response, one for batch execution. Got it. So we have two ones for real-time responses. And I guess the next is if you have a batch of data, it, it'll bring back, uh, back yep. for that. So the request response is if I'm sending one uh, one value and want to get a, single, a get singular back. value back. And the other is I'm sending just a bunch of data, right? And, Got it. Right, that's what this means. All right. All right. So last updated, 1029. That's day. We're good. All right. Perfect. So uh, we've now published this to production. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the uh, the API help page sure. for request response. Got it. Now we're not going to really do anything here, but okay. this is uh, some of this again. Um, again, you can see the data endpoint information. It actually says O data information, so it's, it's getting cut off on the left uh, for some reason. But it okay. says O data endpoint. Sure. Um, because this is an O data endpoint. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we want our service or, uh, to, to access, or if, if we need to access this OData endpoint, there's going to be some level of authorization. Okay, right? got it. We'll actually see that when we publish to the marketplace. Okay. Right? So uh, this, this is the uh, OData endpoint. And actually scroll down a little bit because we see a bunch of information here. So we can see an example of the OData body mm -hmm. or the, the, you know, the simple request of the body, the response, what the response is going to look like, the, di the different type of data types that are coming back in the body, things like that. But here's where it gets exciting, and this is what I really like. Microsoft, you can tell, put some thought into this mm -hmm. because they tell you, look, if you want to access this, this, this uh, service through the API, mm -hmm. we actually give you sample code. Awesome. Right? So there you got C Sharp, Python, and R. Python, and even R, okay. And even R. So I can use this in my Python application and put this as part of that and, you, and call from that the web service to get my results. Absolutely, awesome. absolutely. Okay. So we are actually going to use in module four the, the C Sharp code to gain access to, that, uh, to, that, to this web service. All right, looking right. forward. Yeah, this is going to be fun. All right, so just to point out kind of what's, this is some information that we want to use. If we're going to do authentication to our web service, mm -hmm. we would grab the OData endpoint, right? So we, we might need to grab that. Actually, uh, we do need to, I think, grab that. So let's go ahead and grab that. Okay, and can I copy it in my uh, notepad? Yep. All right. Yep, we're going to paste that in notepad. Okay. Copy and, I'll and paste. paste. All right. Yep. Perfect. Okay. All right. So we don't need any other information there, but we do. We do need that. All right. Got it. Perfect. All right. So we're sort of done in the in this uh, Azure ML Studio, okay. right? Because we've actually published to staging. Got it. Okay. Let's go back to so the next step. Is we actually actually we actually now have to publish this. So okay. our next step is let's actually go back. Let's go to the actual uh, Azure portal, not the ML Studio portal, but the portal. You think we need to configure? Oh, you're right. So we did. Yes. Yeah, so we need to go back to the portal. Let's cl click on configuration. <laughs> so even though we've published it to um, uh, staging, we actually have to tell it this is ready for production. Ready, ready. Okay. Yeah. We're we really mean <laughs> that we want to produce. All right. Yes. All right. So thank you. I, I missed the step. Okay. Yes. So we want to click yes here All because. Right. It, it's sort of a you know uh, double authentication right. type of thing. We want to say yes, we're are ready sure? for production. All yep. Right. Are you doubly doubly sure you want to make this ready for production? <laughs> okay. And go ahead and click save. I'll save it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Now, so we're good. It's it's at this point. What it will now do is since it's ready ready for production, it will actually show up as a web service in our Azure in oh, our Azure true. portal. Okay. Right? So let's go back to our Azure portal. Okay, and let's go scroll down to, let's refresh our machine learning there right, let's again. refresh it. Um, just to be sure. Just to be sure. Which is kind of interesting because now, you know, it, uh, two environments we're working in the, in the uh, ML Studio, right? So we take our experiment, we've now per made it ready for right. production. There's the authoring experience in my, uh, ML Studio, and then yep. there's the, the admin experience, if you, if you may, Correct. in the portal. Got yep. it. Okay. And as soon as Azure comes back here, <laughs> yeah. all right, there we go. So let's go ahead and click on uh, go, click on the left arrow. Let's go back to our list of web services. Uh, from here. Yep. Well, no. Go, uh, so is this the one we're working with? Okay. Yep. Yes, this is the one we're working with. Okay. So click on web services. Okay. And it looks like I have a new add button on the bottom. Yep. So we have a new add button. We want to add the one that we just worked is with. Is this one the yep. MVA real experiment? Is that okay. the one you guys created? Yes, I think. Perfect. It is. All right. So let's go ahead and click uh, OK. All right. And it looks like on the bottom, oh, it's already finished. The it says completed deploying the service MVA real experiment. Awesome. So let's go. Let's go into that. Okay. My MVA real experiment. Yep. All right. And so what we want to do is 
Um, we just made it. We just made it available, right? Okay. So, uh, at this point, uh, we made the web server available. We need to send it to the Azure marketplace. Right. So we needed to we needed to deploy this, yeah. right? So what we want to do now is publish this to the Azure marketplace. Got it. Yeah. Right. So this is actually a two-step process now, right? Um, we want, we don't need to edit the staging service, okay. right? I think we're, we're I think we're good here, sure. um, but we do need to we actually need to deploy the service. Okay, sure. So so I, I got to figure out where the where's our deploy service button? Yeah, publish to Azure Marketplace. Uh, let's go back a second because we okay. may uh, is that yeah. So there's our API key. Right. Um, Let's go back. Click on the left arrow up there. I don't. Right. Did, did we did we publish it? Yes, we we. I think we just. We did publish it. Yes. Okay, good. We did publish it. So go. Let's go. Let's go in there. Okay. All right. Uh, awesome. So let's now publish it to the Azure uh, uh, Azure So first step we did is we pub we we actually published it. Mm -hmm. We're good to go. Uh, now what we want to do uh, we want to make our make uh, our web service available. Uh, so we need to send it to the Azure Marketplace. Got it. Now. Got it. So right. so, uh, so so up to now we've published it to the Azure. Uh, portal site yeah. as a web service. As a web and service, we want to register in the marketplace. Yep. Okay. Got it. Right. Because Azure Marketplace is really all. It, well, is it, what it's doing is just uh, it's when you access the Azure Marketplace, it's really calling our oh, service. Oh. Okay. Got it. Right. So this will make my uh, app or my my prediction service discoverable. Discoverable. Got it. Okay. Yep. Right. So this was just a, a multi-step thing, right? So again, what we're doing now is making our service, our data, discoverable through the Azure Marketplace. Got it. Right. Can so, <laughs> uh, what's that? Yeah. So go ahead and click that. All right. Okay. And what we want to do here is we want to sc scroll down, uh, and we want to say, um, uh, click web service. Click on the web service. Uh, we, we we got an API key. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what we want to do here is click on the web service, and this is again. If we go back to the portal, you'll see that. Go back to the portal real quick. I, I want to point this out because okay. this is important to point out. Nope, Got the it. portal itself. Okay. Scroll down there on that page. Mm -hmm. This is this is kind of important. You'll see there's an API key. Right. right? right. This is you and I ran into this when yes. we were running. Yeah. This is important to note, yeah. right? This is a staging. This is a there's there's staging and there's production. Right. Right. We found out earlier that this is the staging, staging API key. key. You want the API key inside. We want the API key inside of that, right? Which right. is uh, actually so. If you oh, go, yeah. Yeah, go back, uh, go back. Mm -hmm. Right. We want to click on Edit Staging Service. Mm -hmm. I think is what we clicked on. The, right. There's our production the API right. key. Okay. That's the one we want. Okay, so this is the important key that we want when we, want, when we registered for data marketplace. Yeah, Got exactly. It. That's the one we want. So, uh, um, yes, yeah, so that's the one we want. So let's go back to the marketplace. Sure. Okay, we did copy the OData endpoint address, right? Um, so we, we, we go ahead and click on, uh, we did pu click Publish to Azure Marketplace. So scroll down, we want to get to the guidelines for publishing Azure Marketplace. Mm -hmm. There you are. Mm -hmm. And we want to click on uh, Register as a Publisher. Right. I'll do that. Right. Okay, so there we are. Now uh, we want to click on. If you scroll down there, we see the home page link. We're going to click on the home page link. Uh, we should let the people know that clicking on this takes it to the Azure Marketplace. Yes. Um, it might be, look different from the other one, but we, we, there's another step that says data services. Yeah, exactly. Right? So right. at this point, yeah. yeah. So depending on there's, a, I think some older the version. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Depending on the version you're working with, right? Then uh, the, clicking on that home page will take you here. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is get to the data services. So you'll scroll down to the mm -hmm. data services, this one. right? Uh, and you'll click on the data services view data services. And Got this it. Actually, this is I, I like this right here. Got it. Right because so is this like, like our marketplace for all the data sets and all the uh, models and that and all sorts. Yep. So this is other yeah other uh, uh, other models, other ex other experiments that have actually been published Got out. It. Right. I look. I see there's some free ones. Yep. Um, there's also uh, by categories and there's m many categories. Um, and also see some paid ones as well. Do you think I can make some money off of my model, or exactly? So if it, it just depends, you know, what you want to <laughs> do. It. But yes, I mean, ultimately, yeah. we'd like to make our, make some money off our Got model, it. right? Okay. But yeah, if, if, if there are some free ones, there are some paid ones, and you actually can, can scroll down if you. It's by category, but if you scroll yeah. down a little bit, uh -huh. you can do, view it by publisher as well. Oh, and there's right. even machine learning ones. Yeah, woo! -hoo. Okay. Well, and that's actually where ours is going to go by category. We're going to actually publish the Got machine it. learning Let's ones. Publish so it there. Yep. Yeah, perfect. All right, so um, let's actually, uh, what we want to do now is let's start the publish process. Okay. So a quick recap, what sure. we did is we took our model, mm -hmm. we made it a web service, mm -hmm. done, right? right. Uh, we rolled it into production, mm -hmm. 
Uh, and now we're going to make this. Uh, we're going to go into the machine, the uh, Azure Marketplace, uh -huh. and create a uh, discoverable app that points to the web service. Uh, the web service. Got it. Okay. Okay. Good. So let's go ahead and to do that. Let's go ahead and click on publish. All right. Okay. And from here, we simply click on. It should be obvious. Get green started. Button. Okay. Here. Big green button says get started. All right. Okay. Now. Um, when you're first getting started with this, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to ask you to create a profile. You have to actually sign up and say, hey, get this is kind of where you might have to stop a little mm -hmm. bit, right? Because right. Uh, you have to actually sign up to be a publisher, be a publisher right. on the Azure Marketplace. Right. We did this uh, behind the scenes. Yes, we did um, this behind the scenes. Because right. what it does is it, it, it says, it sends an email to the Azure Marketplace people and says, um, Look, this guy wants to publish, or this right. person wants right. to publish, and yeah. so the process could take up to 24 hours. Right. Or to get registered as a publisher. To get registered, Got it. right? Okay. But you can at least uh, follow along as we're doing it. So when, uh, if you're viewing this after the recording, you can mm -hmm. at least follow along after. Right. Okay. So I guess what happened, what happened when we did it before was uh, we registered as a publisher, and it gave us a Stellar account um, that we used for the website and for the namespace yep. and all the profiles that we needed that entered, for, for example, yep. phone numbers and all that. Right. Um, I think it also gives us an administrator window, which helps us to add co-admins in case you know, you're out of office. Right. Um, other people who can help manage your Stellar dashboard. Yep. Got it. All right. So what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and click on, let's go back out to uh, seller account, okay. I think, is where we want to go. Got it. And it says our profile is incomplete. But we want to create, actually, a new, a new data service. OK. All right. Go to data services. Yep. So uh, publishers, so go back to publishers really quick. Okay. Right. This just says, hey, OK, we are the seller. We're the publisher of this. Right? right. So we want to give it a service name, fill out that information. Mm -hmm. And once you complete this process, this is where it sends it and says, OK, you have to get approval so your status could be pending, things yes, like that. Yes, right? yes. Got it. Okay. All right. So we're going to go and click on uh, data services. Mm -hmm. And we're going to create a new data service. OK. okay? Uh, so let's create a new data service and let's call this. M I was using the name MVA Real. I'll call it Model. Yep, Real okay. Model. Okay, right. perfect. So I'll go ahead and click create, create a new data service. Okay. Perfect. All right. So this is, uh, at this point, our, uh, our, our, ser our discoverable service is created, but it hasn't really published yet. Got it. Because right? we have to actually walk through now uh -huh. and, and uh, provide some, uh, configure that. Uh, that service, that right. that app, that the marketplace app, mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, from pricing, support, things like that. Got it. So we're going to walk through right. each one of these. So right. you can see our, as you see there on the left hand, a navigation mm -hmm. pane. Right. There's our MVA real model. Right. So now we want to do a walk through, and here on this page right now, it actually takes you through and says, okay, here's the information, the steps that you need to complete. Mm -hmm to get your, uh, right. your... And it looks like it offers some detailed uh, information on all, each of these mean, different types of plans that we have, whether it's free, unlimited, whatnot. Um, yep. You can even name your price, um, and map, map your data service to regions, language, and all that, right? So yeah, can yep. you walk me through how, how to set this up? Yep, absolutely. So yep. the first thing we're going to do, some of these are just more information. We're uh -huh. not going to go into configure every one of these. Got it. But we're going to have to, depending on the type of service you want to make, or the app you want to make available, sure. Uh, depends on how much you're going to fill out. So let's sure. walk through each one of these. Got it. Right? So let's go ahead and click on plan because we have to create a new plan. So go ahead and okay. click on plan there. And let's add a new plan. Okay. And then this new plan says, is, like it says there, when customers subscribe to your service, they want to purchase uh, uh, you know, the usage for this, right? So what is this plan? What's your plan going to be? So it really, it. Let's go, so go ahead and click on add a new plan. Okay. And this plan is uh, two things, right? It's is it an unlimited or limited service, mm -hmm. uh, and what's the container? You know, what are we, we going to call this right. plan? And this is really all it is, right? right? And the difference is just by default, it's unlimited. We can leave it there. You got forty-one characters to name sure, that. Sure. But, okay, I'll just keep it as yeah. Let's yeah. just keep it as that. There's right. our plan, right? right. All right, and you can see uh, no trial. If we want to, so the plan is, and this is where, like you go to the Azure homepage, right? right. You've got a free trial. What, mm -hmm. What's the different types of plan? Got it. We can say, you know, this is no trial, or maybe we do a one month trial, trial. if we want, okay. things like that. Got it. So it gives us a, a, some flexibilities too. If, it, if people want to experiment and get to know your app before they purchase it, sounds like a good idea. Right. Yep, very good idea. Yeah. So we're just going to leave it like that, right? Okay. Uh, so go ahead and click on marketing. Okay, let's go to marketing. Right. This says, what 
uh, languages mm -hmm. are we going to make our app available in? Okay. So go ahead and click on, you know, English, expand English. But right. you can see there that we can make an all sorts of, you know, uh, we can provide links, we can provide sample images, provide Logos. some legal, uh, legal um, call it legal mumbo jumbo. Disclaimers, <laughs> guidance, whatnot. Okay. Yep, exactly. Got it. Um, we really don't need to do much here, but you know uh, that just mm -hmm. says uh, it, for U.S. English, um, uh, what kind of you know what kind of uh, model do we want to create? What kind of marketing material uh, and, and legal information do we want do we want to provide? Got it. Right. Yeah. I guess this would be an important part for real publishers. Correct. Publishers for yeah. the, for their app to be better discoverable, uh, more appealing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got it. Okay. Yep. Okay, and you can see like, like there's uh, underneath that there's links. You can click on links and see is there additional information that I want to provide? Mm -hmm. to, you know, to maybe point them to my home page, for right, example, right, right? Right, or support page, maybe support page. Yeah. Yep, that's yep, that's good. Uh, maybe an image like yeah. when we, uh, you know, a few minutes ago when we were looking yeah. at the sample ones, yeah. some of these had an image yeah. there, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Definitely want to provide a good image. Got it. You know, it makes it more appealing. Right? Got it. And if I All right. it's legal. Yeah, okay. Yep. And then if there's any policy URL that we want to point them to, perfect. Got it. All right. So that's just, again inf uh, information. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and click on pricing. Okay. All right. And again, this is where we say, uh, how, what are we gonna? You know, what current what what currencies are we gonna make this available in? Okay. Um, what countries are we gonna make this available mm -hmm. in? And how much are we gonna charge based right. on for in, in each currency? Right. Sounds great. Uh, by default, it's U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we'll just leave that. But you can see all the different types of currencies mm -hmm. that uh, we're gonna keep. Right. And I can put in a monthly price, I guess, from here. Yep. You, uh, yeah. So we can say, hey, I'm gonna charge, you know, nine ninety nine or something like that. Or I, I feel or, confident. Yeah. Exactly. This is an awesome app. People okay. want to know what kind of movies we're watching. Right. And, right. Right. Yeah. Correlation between the movies. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. So let's go ahead and click then on um, support. Okay. Right. Um, this is uh, again an interesting one because. Who do you want, if, if there's a problem with the service, this really says, if there's call? a problem, who do you call? Got it. Right? Now, it's really, who do you want to throw under the bus? Yeah. <laughs> it's either right? you or Buck. You or me, me or I'll, Buck, I'll, or, I'll, you know, I'll you cut. could uh, throw engineering under there, right? right. Let's, let's throw my, uh, let's, who do you want to throw, let's see, yeah, all of these. I can skip it if you don't want it. Tell well, it's, it's kind of required, so let's put, let's put uh, me at Microsoft.com or something like that. Yeah, okay. There we go, and a phone. Remember, we'll you know. do four, two, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, four, six, five seven. six, seven. There we All go, right. right? And a support URL, we'll just put, you know, Microsoft.com. Support, just for yeah. this. Perfect. All right, so this is just the, the, the contact. Uh, oh, it's not a, it's a URL, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, www, yep, at Microsoft.com. Okay. Perfect. So again, who's uh, if you if there's uh, need, if this your app needs support, mm -hmm. who's going to get the the, Got it. the questions? Okay. okay? Uh, next, so and, and a lot of times you might in this scenario mm -hmm. put in like an engineering contact course, or yes. something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Uh, so it really just depends on what you're trying to do there. Got it. All right, so now we're going to go to categories. Uh, now, so, uh, since we're publishing a machine learning and we want to discover, we want people that are interested in mm -hmm. machine learning, we're going to mm -hmm. click on machine learning. A category is required here. Okay. Right. You cannot uh, you cannot publish uh, an app without putting it, selecting at least one category. So Got it. we'll select uh, machine learning. Got it. And then if there's any other categories that we, that we want to include this in right. to make it more discoverable, right? This mine's a movie. Uh Prediction app, can I click on media and entertainment? Absolutely, media and right. entertainment. Okay. Right. Whatever is going to make this uh, app more discoverable, we want to we want it. to uh, select, right? Okay. So, you know, not sports, but again, uh, we, want, we want to make this discoverable. Got it. All right. Uh, and then let's go ahead and click on uh, data services. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So let's give it a namespace. This namespace must be all lowercase, okay. no spaces, no special characters, so we'll just call it MVA, whatever. Model, okay. Yep. And let's go ahead and click on web services. Got it. Okay. This is, the, this is a, another important okay. step, right? This is where we want to we point our app to the, to the web service. Got it. Right? Okay. So we're going to basically say, all right, there is, so the OData link that we, that we <laughs> that I provided. Copied. Right. Yep. So we're going to go back to that. Okay. I copy this. Yep, grab all of that. You'll see. Yep, and paste, paste it in it. the service URI. Okay. Done. All right. Now there's a couple other things, a couple other steps here that uh, we need that are, that are important, mm -hmm. right? The first one we want to do is make sure that says uh, we want to make sure that this service is OData, that mm -hmm. that is selected. Got it. Right. So down a little bit. This right there. Is OData. Okay. Yep. 
You highlight it. Let's highlight that. Yep. We want to make sure that's okay because it, it is an old data. It's old data. Right. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, lastly, what we want to do on this page. Do I need to select any authentication scheme? Can I do just do none? Yep. Uh, great segue because we we're, we're, I was actually just going to oh, come okay. back to that. <laughs> right. So uh, the authorization scheme is all depends on what type of authorization you want to access. You know. Got it. Uh, how do you want to authorize uh, access it. to this web service? Got it. Right. We're not going to get too complicated. For example, uh, go ahead and click on header, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we could give it a name and then uh, the header value. And the header value is really that the, that production API key. I see. That we'd put in there, you right? Put and the API key inside here. Inside there, right? Got it. Okay. Um, we could do like basic. So we click on basic. Username, sort of password. Username, password, yeah. password, things like that. Since mine's free or it's too expensive, I'll make it. We're going to make it none, okay. right? Yeah. And, and, and none's okay. It really depends on how you want to secure your, your Got app, it. right? And the, and, Got it. and the web service in the back, right? Got it, okay. But this is good, so. All right, all right. Uh, this is perfect. All right, so the next step is, what we want to do is, let's go uh, test the connection. Connection was successful. Woo. All right, so we were actually able to because there's no authentication or no authorization. <laughs> we, we don't know anybody can get to our service now. Okay. But again, if we were to do like header and things like that, we would want to test our connection to we make would sure that check. Okay. Yep. That we can that our app can actually talk to the web service. Got it. Got we want it. to do that. Okay. All right. And let's go ahead and click on the publish page. All right. Now, again, a two-step process. Okay. All right. Um, here we're gonna go ahead and click on uh, push to staging. Okay. Right. Now there's a couple things here, mm -hmm. right? This just says we, we haven't really pushed, uh, published it, mm -hmm. right? What we want to do, uh, if since we're pushing to staging, it actually goes out and does some checking to say, ah, is there right. anything uh, missing, missing or wrong. not configured right, Got things it. like that, right? I need to provide legal. Um, exactly. Apple. So anything that have a like yeah. a red check mark or something Got to it. highlight and say, look, you need to go fix these things. Got it. Right? Got it. Okay. Even though our connection tested successful, that's just the connectivity. That's just. Um, yep. You want to make sure your application is full. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Um, at this point, we're not going to actually uh, publish it because we don't. You know, this is just a walkthrough. But at it this might, point, we yeah. could say, all righty, you know, send that out to, mm -hmm. and re, you know, it, it actually send an email, uh, some information out to the Azure ML uh, for them to approve. To prove. And I'm sure they'll not approve my ninety-nine thousand dollar app, right? So. Exactly. Okay. Right. And, okay. and plus, it's you know, you say, hey, why are you trying to push publish movie data out there? <laughs> oh, right? right. That's true. Right. But yeah. really, this is you know, we're, we're at this point, we're ready to publish this out to right. to the uh, to the uh, data marketplace. marketplace. Right? Sounds good. All right. Um, uh, we could actually go through, which is interesting. Uh, go ahead and click on history. Okay. Right. Had we you know done any changes, uh -huh. right? We said, okay, we want to change the price, or we want to. Um, uh, maybe change, make this available, and, and add a different kind uh -huh. of currency or add uh -huh. legal information. Uh -huh. We could click on history in here and see, hey, this uh -huh. was created. We published it here. We updated it here. Things like that. So we could actually see the publishing history out uh -huh. to the, of our app to the data right. market. So keeps a log of all the stuff that I've done. Okay, that's that's correct. Helpful. So this is good to know as we're going to publish uh, information, right? Sounds great. So uh, go back to publish real quick. Okay. So at this point, we're done. We could really just publish this. Mm -hmm wasn't really uh, too difficult. It was what we need to do is make our our, our app available through as a web service, our, our model and Got our it. experiment as a model, mm -hmm. as a web service, mm -hmm. because our app is now going to talk to that web service. Right, right. right. Um, I think there's, a, what I really like about this is that it's really not that not that difficult. I just went through the steps. Yeah, that's all I did. Yeah, in, in less than an hour. Yeah. And the, the important thing here is that at some, you probably weren't able to follow along too much because to be able to publish, you need to be a publisher. It's and a real to thing. Get, yeah. yeah, you have to yeah. go get approval for that. Got it. But as you watch this later, you can actually go out and say, all right, let me follow along mm -hmm. and, and to be a publisher. So if you have an app, you can do, you can do that as well. But at this point, we're actually done because right. we've actually published our app. Right. Now, this is very high level. Right. But it shows you the power and the flexibility to say, I have this data that I want to make available. I want to make this available on the data marketplace, and it's really almost that easy. Sounds right? good. So I'm now able to monetize my uh, machine learning. Sounds app. good. So now I feel like a data scientist and a publisher. And a publisher. All right. All right. I'm You're ready. doing well. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all plus. Right. This is awesome. All right. All right. So uh, you can actually go back to your boss now and say, I need a raise because I'm a data scientist, a publishing data scientist. A publishing data scientist. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. And you can be a publishing data scientist at home. We're professionals, right? Don't try this at home. Actually, we want you to try this at home. <laughs> try right. this at yeah, home. Okay. Right. Okay. So 
Uh, anyway, th thank you for watching Module 4, or Module three. 3, yeah. Module 3. Yeah. I'm excited to get to Module 4, yeah. actually. So what do we have in store for Module 4? So this is interesting, because as you went back and we saw that API key, uh -huh. right, the, the question is, well, I may not want to, because now what we have is we have an app in the um, uh, data, data marketplace, marketplace right? Yeah. right? We also have the standalone service out here, that, oh, right? Yeah. Right, right. So maybe I want to write an app, mm -hmm. or I've got an application that I want to access this AP, th this web service. Wow, that's right? awesome. Uh -huh. So the Azure API service allows me to do that. So in Module Four, we're actually going to talk about how to get uh, uh, how to use. Remember that code we looked at? Right. Right. That oh. C sharp Python uh -huh. and R code. Uh -huh. We're actually going right. to spend. We're, uh, it won't be too long. It'll probably be about 10, 15 minute module because right. it's actually pretty easy, right? But this is right. shows the power and flexibility of hey, I can now take an existing application or write a new application, maybe a Windows 8 app or a, or, or a mobile app. Mm -hmm and get access to this web service, to this same data. Right, sounds right. awesome. It sounds awesome. Right. Anyway, so quick recap. Uh, we just took our data, mm -hmm. web service, mm -hmm. published this to, as, as an app in the marketplace. We're now in module four going to um, uh, consume that. Consume that from the developer environment. From, from the developer environment. Sounds great. So everybody, thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you in a few minutes, All right. in 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to Azure, uh, Azure Machine Learning Jumpstart. Again, my name is Scott Klein, I'm joined here with C. Young. Right. Hi, hi again. So uh, at this point, we, C. Young is now a publishing data, data scientist. scientist. Yes. Right, and he feels woo, okay. awesome, right? right. Uh, he's now, after this, gonna go ask his boss for a huge raise. Right, in addition, I have Visual Studio fired up. Yes. Uh, which is, yeah, this is a, a feat. Does that, does, does that make me a developer as well? <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, your salary just went uh, <laughs> way, way, way <laughs> right. high. So right. you're a developing, publishing data scientist. <laughs> <laughs> or when we're done with this module, you'll be a, a, right. a, a developer. All right. So uh, welcome to module four. So um, what we've covered so far. All right. So we looked at from module one, we talked about the foundation of a, about yep. machine learning, you know, what it means to do machine learning, how do you, you know, categorize data, you know, what does predictive you know, analytics mean. Um, in module two, uh, Buck actually drove me to do an experiment from scratch. And so I created you know, data sets, I, I created how to connect the data sets, um, I filtered it out, I created a data model, and I created a predictive movie recommender um, from scratch, right? And, and from module three, we, you know, with, with Scott, I was able to publish that data model, yep. right, that model, and and you know, show it to the world, and hopefully be able to monetize that. And so, from this module four, I think we're going to talk about how to you know expand that into a developer's you know environment and use it in use that piece of code that was auto generated into my application. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and that's perfect. The whole goal is we basically said right, take what you take what you made, make that uh, that data available as a consumable app in the in the Azure marketplace. Mm -hmm. Consumable, you know, be able to consume that data. Here in module four, we're actually going to talk about how do we extend that, right? Because we now have this app, that, this application, the Data Marketplace, that talks to our web service because mm -hmm. we published our web service. But maybe we want our own applications to be able to consume that same data through OData, right? The Got OData it. service. So this is what we're going to talk about here in Module 4. Not going to be very long. I know we've been keeping you around for a little bit. We're just going to do a quick hit here, right? All right. Uh, all right. So uh, here we are. We're going to talk about the, a the Azure API service, right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at the Azure ML API service. And this is the whole goal we're going to do is we want to look at how does, because in, in the last module we saw the API, right? It actually told us here's the web service, here's how you can, can connect to it. Because that's what the application of the data marketplace is actually really doing, right? Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do. All right, so uh, let's lead in with one question and then actually sure. we're going to jump out and he has done fantastic. Siang has done, <laughs> done fabulous Thank you. Uh, driving, right? be able to create a model, mm -hmm. an experiment, publish that out. So we're gonna just have him uh, wrap this up, right? All right, let's do it. So this is the ability to say, how do we expand our reach, right? We don't want to, we wanna remove these traditional barriers by saying, how can anybody uh, get access to, or how do we make this data available to the masses, mm -hmm. right? 
the data science economy was emerging, right? How do we today make this available, right? right. Through our either our uh, Windows phone, uh, you know, our Windows phone devices, you know, our mobile devices, our tablets, right. uh, on the go type right. of thing, right? So we want to expand our reach and make this data available to everybody. Yeah. So I've also heard that because this area is so new, there aren't a lot of apps or a lot of best practices out there. So we've seen a large group of developers actually starting the machine learning to embed it in their apps, yep. to embed it in their systems and solutions and whatnot. So we see yep. that trend uh, more and more today, ever so than before. Correct. Yep. Uh, and so the question would be, if we could remove those barriers, mm -hmm. right, uh, would you be a part of it? And hopefully through these last, you know, these, these few modules, modules one, two, three, and now four, we're hopefully the goal is to entice you to say, yes, I could actually do that and be part of that, mm -hmm. right? Now here's some API examples that we have that, that Microsoft is currently right. So the whole that we, we we took a, uh, earlier in the last module, mm -hmm. we showed you the the Azure Marketplace and all the different categories, different publishers, and all the different things, the the, the different types of data that you could consume that, that that's now available on the Azure Marketplace, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we see quite a few there, okay. right? And so you could actually do the, do the same, right? So we have a whole set of different API examples from, you know, proportion tests to analysis to integrations to calculators, mm -hmm. you know, uh, data di uh, data generations, you know, uh, linear regression things, you know, an, an analysis. Just a whole slew of different API examples. Ours is, you know, it, had we gone through in the last example and published our, you know, our a API would have been, it would be out there as well, right. right? Yeah. So I heard that we had maybe we support maybe four, over 400 R packages yep. directly from machine learning, and so that would be a good news for the existing data scientists out there yeah. um, who use that, right? Yep. Exactly. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to jump out to a demo. Mm -hmm. uh, and have you consume that through a, a very simple example, but it just shows the power of flexibility. So let's switch over to your screen. Right. So right. I'm in the Azure portal now. Yep. Um, so we saw in the last one, um, uh, let's go to machine learning. Okay. I think this is where we can grab the code. Let's go sure. to our web service. The one that, great, right? And if we go to the, click on the web service, and I think it was the real uh, MVA real experience. The real one, yes. Yep. If we click on, um, is it uh, edit, uh, let's click on, uh, where we click on, request response, mm -hmm. right? This is what we, we showed this earlier. Yes, we right? have. Right? Scroll down, uh, right, we see the header and the response by, mm -hmm. from the messages going back and forth, but we saw this in, in the last module. There's sample code that we could actually use to start building out mm -hmm. uh, an application or include right. in a current application, right? Right. We've actually, we're not going to copy paste uh, in this example. We've actually done that earlier, right? Sure. So uh, the way we're going to do this mm -hmm. is you've actually got Visual Studio loaded. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's fire up Visual Studio. And there it is, right? So what we did is we created a very simple, um, uh, well, um, a console application, sure. right? Yep. We started Visual Studio, said uh, new project. We created a C Sharp um, console app, right? right? We removed the code because we don't want anything there. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we, we took the code from the application that we created, mm -hmm. put that in a notepad. So let's right. copy all of that. Okay. Copy let's all paste that. that into here, into Visual Studio. All right. right. Now you'll notice immediately that there's going to be, we've got some red squigglies, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this means that we don't have the right information or the right uh, references installed uh, to it. be able to run our package right. successfully, right? Right. We're actually going to make, it's awesome because Azure ML made this very simple. We're just going to, we, they made everything we need mm -hmm. and put that in a NuGet package. Got it. Right? right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to tools. Tools. Uh, yep. Uh, actually, before you do that, let's go and uh, highlight that install package line. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Copy that. Copy. Go to tools. Go to tools. And we're going to click on uh, NuGet package manager and then uh, the console. Right? right, so there we are. Okay, what we're going to do now is just paste that line in there. So this, the, the the package manager console this allows us from Visual Studio mm -hmm. to install pa uh, packages from NuGet. Okay, right. So we could either do two things, right? We could uh, go to NuGet. I think it's NuGet.org and, and search for our packages there, mm -hmm. uh, and then down install them. But this makes it it's integrated right into Visual Studio. Makes it very easy for us to uh, install. Packages everything up in a nice little unit, mm -hmm. installs everything for us. Got it. Okay, so go ahead and click enter there. And what's going to it's going to think a minute, mm -hmm. but it's going to start installing all, all our references and all the DLLs and everything we need uh, for machine learning. Uh, for machine learning. Awesome. Right in uh, into my environment. Okay. Into your environment, right? Got it. So you notice automatically, 
a few of our, our red squigglies went mm -hmm. away. Oh, yeah, right? I it, yeah. It, which is awesome. And so it's all done. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and click on, where is our, go to view. We, we're, yeah, so there, there you go. Okay. Now notice that the, and the references, notice the, the, some of the um, uh, references that it added. So these new, right? Yeah. Yeah, these are so uh, uh, newtonsoft.json mm -hmm. is, is a new one. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the system.net.http and HTTP formatting is a new one, right? So it added a few of these for us to make, to, right. and what these classes do is actually allow us to make a rest, uh, a rest call. Right. right, so these are special, uh, I guess, references and classes for machine learning yes. that get installed as part of that NuGet console manager. Yep. Got it. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, and now we could, you know, if we, we you know, uh, all our errors went away, we could right mouse click and say, so awesome. Uh, yeah, makes it very easy. Okay. Right mouse click, we could recompile, everything's good. Got it. So at this point, what we did is we copied the code out of the sample, right? Mm -hmm. We're not going to go into too much detail because sure. it just shows a very simple example. Right, right, right. What we do need to do, though, uh -huh. and I think we've already done this as well, right. scroll down a little bit and we okay. can see what's going on, right? So right. we're basically taking some of the information mm -hmm. uh, from a previous uh, model that was already created, right? Right. Uh, when you copy the code, and maybe maybe go back to uh, go back to the API the, the the portal there for a second, sure. right? So scroll down in that window right there. Uh, yep, you'll notice that if you scroll down, keep going. It says uh, the string API it says ABC one two three, and it actually gives you. It says, hey, in order for you to access the web service, since we're making an O data call, you need the API the the. Um, the API key. The, the API key. Uh -huh. Now remember in the last module, mm -hmm. and this is really this is good information, remember that there's two sets of API keys. Mm -hmm. There's the staging API yep. key, but then there's the actual, the actual API production key. API Each key. Each for the, the, the instant uh, request one and for the batch one. And for the batch one, okay. right? So yeah, so it actually is four, four keys, right? Yeah. So what we want is we want, we want the production API key. So we could right. actually go back and click on that and say, all right, no, give me the... Uh, give me the, the production right. API key, right? The so, one. right. So go click on that, mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, we, we we earlier grabbed the API key. This one, right? Yeah, we grabbed that, right? Got it. So at that point, our service uh, and uh, our service is done. So if we go back to the code in Visual Studio, okay, okay, this is a very simple example. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but we paste that in there, mm -hmm. and we look at the code, and all it's doing right there is it's saying, all right, I'm going to ba basically make a uh, an API call, a REST call, mm -hmm. to my OData service. Okay. Right? And what's really great about this is that it built the code for you, so you don't have to uh, put in the URI. Right. If you scroll to right on that URI, it, okay. that actually points to our service. Right? Uh, interesting. Right? Okay. That's actually the, if you look at that, that's actually the OData, the OData link. That, right. right. It actually put that in yeah. there for us. We didn't have yeah. to go do that. Awesome. It shows my data center, the service, the Azure ML, and the workspace. And that's probably and then, the, the workspace key that has in it. Yep. Okay. And then awesome. the score, right? Got it. Now, this is a very simple example because what it does is it actually makes a, uh, uh, an uh, API REST call, okay. right? a response call, mm -hmm. uh, or a, a REST call. And then what it does is it says, give me a, a status back. Now, in this example, it's just saying, look, go get me one. Mm -hmm. right? We could very easily, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, this isn't a Visual Studio class. Right. right? So we're not going to go and start okay. modifying, you know, .NET right. code. Right. But the whole purpose right. of this is just to say, look, here's how we can right. easily access the API. Right. So I guess from here, if I'm Successful, I get results and yep. arrows. If not, it says failed. It, it says failed, right? Okay. So, or, or, and it could be a, a myriad of things, right? If you paste in the if you paste in the wrong API key, uh, right? Like we saw when we were testing, right? right we right. could get something like unauthorized, right? Got it. Hey, Got you're it. trying to hit a production key with a with a, a staging key. Got it. Right? You could get different messages. Okay. So you, what you want to do is so let's go ahead and put a breakpoint. So sure. click over in the corner over there, uh, right where it says on the console, okay. console dot right line. Yep. Click right on that. All right. right? Because what we want to do, this is all going again. Uh, this is doing the the um, the request response, mm -hmm. right? So it's only going to go out and get one and bring it back. Got right? it. Right. We're not sending now. Remember when we did ours? Yeah. We're not sending anything to the API service. So all we're doing is we're making a request. Give us one. Yeah. Right. Got it. Realistically, if you think about it, if you've got, you know, maybe you want to. Uh, depending on the on your on data. the application, yeah, I might yep. I might input more data in there, and it will give me a response exactly. or a prediction, even yep. better, um, of similar movies similar or whatnot. Yeah, yep, exactly. Got it. Okay, this is just we're going, we're getting data back, right? Got so it. This is a very simple example, but it shows how easy it, it is, right? Got it. Okay. So go ahead and click uh, run. Uh, right there, start up start. there in the corner. Yep. Okay. And uh, if everything works, great. 
It should hit our break point. Mm -hmm. Boom. Awesome. It. Results. It worked. So, it, okay. so it, at this point, what did it do? It went out and made a rest call to our OData endpoint, said, mm -hmm. give me some data, mm -hmm. right? And if you, uh, if you hover your mouse over result, mm -hmm. so go ahead and move your mouse. Oh, this over, one. Oh, okay. uh, nope, the other one. This one. The right one. Right. Yep, okay. we can see, hey, here's some data we got back. Yeah. And if you look at, if you were to go back to the, uh -huh. uh, to the experiment uh -huh. and, uh, over the, the, the score, right? Right, right. We would see that this is actually the kind of data that we'd be getting back. Got it. The input right? data and then this is the, okay, got yep, it. Exactly. Yep, exactly. <laughs> So realistically, what we would do in an application is we might loop through all the data and keep making calls or, 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 do, a or do a batch type of thing right, and to okay. get more data back. Sure. Uh, in, in, in a kind of a real world scenario, we, what we would do is we'd pass you know, an input in to say, mm -hmm. you know, uh, say, give me this type of data or give me this range of data or mm -hmm. something like that. Right? Got it, right. But the whole goal of this is to say, look, we actually we're very easily were able to make a quick call mm -hmm. to our own data endpoint. So now as a developer, right, right. I very easily could build into my application to use the API. That's awesome. To access my access my web service that we right. published. So I could access my web service. I could access somebody else's web service and actually use the power of machine learning within my app. Absolutely. That sounds awesome. Yeah, this is right. very good. So as a develop as a developer, then this very easily you could say, hey, now I want to if I have an app or an existing app we're developing again. We, it's all about the reach. What we talked about earlier, right? It's mm -hmm. all about the reach. Right. So if I've got a mobile app or a, a tablet or something like that, a Windows 8 type of app, mm -hmm. right? I want to basically make my data available to the masses. Right. Here's how you do it very easily. Or we can even go further, and with the new, you know, rising of information of things, we could add sensor data, have devices. Put data into our our app exactly, and then have a grand scale of things to grand find. Scale things, yeah, right. patterns. Okay, yep. awesome. Yep. So let's uh, let, let's wrap up here. Let's go back to my uh, my computer for a second. Sure. And what um, what we want to do here is is say, the rest now is up to you, right? Uh, no pun intended, right? No, yeah, no pun, <laughs> no no pun intended. But you know w what we've done is we've really basically said we've showed you, and it, only within you know. It, uh, you know, we call C. Young here a data scientist, but you know, we've hopefully given you the, the initial steps, the foundation for understanding how does Azure Machine Learning work? Right. How do you build your models? How do you build your predictive models? How do you start getting better insight into your data? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, look at, okay, I've got, my, I've got it working. You and Buck spent a lot of time mm -hmm. you're building a great foundation. Now I want to monetize that. Mm -hmm. I want to make that data available on the Azure Marketplace mm -hmm. because there's some value around right. that, actually, right. Right? right? And then as a developer, oh my goodness, right? Now I have very easily, I'm not learning a whole new set of technologies other than the machine learning piece, but right. as, a, as a .NET developer or Python or R, mm -hmm. right, I can very easily plug this into my application. Right. Right? And I guess to, you know, just to summarize, this is the introductory course for machine learning. Yes. Um, and if the feedback is great, we can probably do another series, or a deep dive even, yes. um, for, for the next series of this machine learning thing. But, but again, yeah, this is the introduction. Um, hopefully it gives, gives everybody a good taste of what machine learning can do right. and what, we can, and what we've you know, released in the last couple of months. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, we would love your feedback on this, honestly. We'd love to know what you thought about this course. Mm -hmm. uh, again, like uh, Si Young said, this is an introduction course. They really to give you the tools, the, the, you know, drive the excitement of, hey, we have this actually ability to do predictive analysis on all your data, right. right? And then make it available to you, right? So anyway, so Young, thank you. Thank you. Everybody, thank you for watching. I hope this was, we would appreciate your feedback. And again, please don't forget to fill out the, the, uh, survey. the survey at the end. That tells us um, you know, how we can do better. Um, not that we are professionals, we're doing, <laughs> we are doing a good job, but, you know, but it does tell us uh, how we can improve. So thank you very much for watching. We hope to see you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.